<clears throat> I'd like to call to order the January 11, 2016 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, we have a few things on the agenda this evening before we get to what I think everyone's here for. So just be patient with us as we move through here. Uh, we are being recorded by ACMI. First up this evening is the appointment of the Arlington Redevelopment Board representative to the Open Space Committee. Uh, it's been suggested that Wendy Richter take that spot. I think, Wendy, you're here way in the back tonight. If you could come up and uh, state your name and address for the board and just tell us a little bit about yourself. And Should I take a seat? Qualifications. Yes, please. please. Uh, yeah, I'm not um, going to make you stand. My name is Wendy Richter, and I am an architect and a longtime resident. I've been in Arlington for 20 years. Um, I am interested in open space. I'm an avid walker. I feel like I know the town pretty well from on foot. And um, I was involved with the master plan process. Uh, I was on the master plan advisory committee. And um, I have continued now on the implementation committee. So this would be another, another hat to wear in the process of, so. Okay. I'm Ann LeRoy, reserved to the chair of the open space committee. Oh, I didn't see you back there, Ann. I apologize. Do you want to come up and, as well? Ken, any questions for either Ann or Wendy? Andy? No. All right. I appreciate that you're offering. You got we, Wendy came to our last meeting and um, met the other members, and you know we all thought she would be a great new member for our group. So we're, and especially to have her represent the ARB, we haven't mm -hmm. had an active uh, representative from this group for a while because the previous person stopped being able to be, to do it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're glad to have a, you know, a more formal liaison. Yeah. <coughs> as are we. We'd ask that you report back quarterly, at least, okay. uh, at most, rather, mm -hmm. semi-yearly at best, uh, at least. Seeing that, I entertain a motion. Uh, I move to uh, <coughs> appoint Wendy Richter as volunteer. Uh, as, as ARB liaison on the Open Space Committee. Is that correct? Aye. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Ann. Thank you for doing this. Sir. Sure. Andrew, before we move to the next item, I just wanted to let people know that last month we um, appointed David Fields to represent the ARB on the um, Arlington Preservation Committee, uh, Arlington Preservation Fund, and um, David has let us know that he's um, he has resigned and is moving on to a new position in Lexington. So we will have to reappoint someone, but the next meeting is not until May, so there's not a pressing need to do that at okay. this meeting. So I think if we could get a couple of candidates presented to us before then, that would be fine. We can wait at least until the next meeting, if not further out into the spring. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> Next up is, uh, we've been asked to comment, is to the Zoning Board of Appeals on uh, a comprehensive permit filed by the Housing Corporation of Arlington regarding property at 20 Westminster Ave. And I believe, yes, could you come forward, Pam? Introduce yourself for the record. Sure. And Laura, can you tell us a little bit about what the ZBA is looking for? Yes. Do you want me to summarize the project or just... Why don't you summarize the project, okay. and then we can ask questions, um, Pam. Yeah, so this is a, uh, currently it's a vacant church that um, has not been used as a church in a couple of years. It's in um, Downing Square. It's a triangular parcel, a pretty large parcel. Um, and the, the proposal is to convert it to nine units of affordable housing. All of the units will be affordable. Um, the reason that it needs a comprehensive permit rather than uh, just a, sp a special permit or a um, EDR is that it is a multi it's a single family zone and this is multifamily housing so that is not allowed by right um, or or even by special permit so a, a, a comprehensive permit is needed and it is um, because the units are affordable uh, that makes it allowable um, they've been to the ZBA for one hearing and they will be going back to the ZBA tomorrow. 
Um, they have asked all town departments and boards to comment on the proposal if they have any comments. So um, it's, it's coming before you to just say if, if you have any concerns about it or want to just voice your support for the project. Okay. Ken. Uh, well, I just off, is this an as right project? Is this 40B? Oh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. And as right? As right is 40B is, is, is not as Not right. as right. It's not allowed because it's a single family zone and it's nine units in one building. Okay, I thought my understanding of 40B was that uh, if you do all affordable housing and fall under the state statute and Arlington right now is below. Um, that's not true. That's not true? It is not. Okay, and that's why there's no approvals needed. This is not for approval, right? This is just for our recommendation. It's this not is for our we're, your we're just being asked to be, give comment. Okay. And it's the Zoning Board <coughs> of Appeals that grants comprehensive permits. Okay. The ZBA has asked us I'm to just, <coughs> okay. provide comments. So we asked Pam to come here as representative of the HCA to answer any questions we might have. Uh, well, we'll be able to do that. I had one comment. Uh, well, one to start off with, I guess, is the package I was given did not show. Uh, where the trash uh, was going to be collected for the project. Okay. I or it, it showed it as two spots, mm -hmm. one along the street here and one along, well, both sides here. But now you seem to be have showing a newer plan that yes. was submitted today, which is going to be, one is going to be interior uh, along Westminster Avenue. Yes. And the other one is behind the vestibule where you had, well, I'm not sure where this No, the other is on Lowell, uh, right beside the building. It's in this section right here. Currently, there is an old shed there, which we'll take down. And we will put the trash there and surround it with a fence. So it'll be immediately outside the front door. On, oh. on um, which street? On, on Lowell Street. street. On Lowell. I think it should be in here. I certainly sent them out. If not, I have a copy. Yeah, no, I actually, there's, yeah. There's some there. So, on the site plan that was submitted. That site plan is not here, but I will, well, I have a site plan. So, a site plan that was submitted is inaccurate then, right? Where you? That was uh, submitted back in early December. Okay. The Zoning Board of Appeals asked us to go ahead and look at uh, alternatives. Okay. So, and we've changed the location. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I had for questions as far as that, because there was not, okay. you not. Um, now, when you say you are going to try to find off-site parking uh, for for anybody that may need it, where would that off-site parking well, be? Well, actually, what we stated was that there would be off uh, overnight parking for guests. Um, we didn't state that we would be looking for off-site parking for the tenants. Um, we did a survey of our wait list. We had good 500 good email lists that we sent out uh, a description of the project and said that we were thinking about doing it with no parking and we asked our potential tenants to comment on whether they would live there and have no parking spaces. And so we had 95 that responded out of the 500 and 63 of those said I don't need parking. I don't utilize a car. So that would be our uh, universe of waitlist recipients that we would plan to have in this building. So you're saying you're only selecting from people who has no cars? Right, because there will be no parking provided with these units. Okay. Because it's a very tight street. It, that corner is a, kind of a crazy corner as far as... Right. I mean, I, I go through it all the time, and people right. don't know where, where the stop sign is. That, I agree. I go okay. through it every day, too, <laughs> at least know, twice. You don't know who has to right away and so forth like that. And then if yes. you add parking along there, it just gets really... And that's what we're saying is no parking. So we're anticipating our tenants not having cars. Okay, so, so what you said here in a brief is that you would try to find um, off-site uh, parking for guests. For guests, actually, yes. And what we've done is we have, there's actually a, a bylaw in the, uh, the town bylaw that allows waivers for overnight parking uh, up to 14 per year per address. And they have to apply to the police 
um, and go ahead, and then the police have to grant it. So that's what we would do for overnight guests. We don't anticipate, we don't typically have many overnight guests for our tenants. We also have three or two other spaces that are a little bit further away. They're four tenths of a mile away. One is at 1166 Mass Ave. We have excess parking in that parking lot. And we have at 34 Forest Street, we have excess parking there. So we would have two of those parking spaces available. And how far are those away? Four tenths of a mile. Which is? So about 2,000 feet. Okay. Certainly walkable, right down Lowell Ave. Which way? <clears throat> Towards Cambridge. Andy? Oh, um, just more on your subject. Uh, so the, the HCA has excess parking spaces unused at each of its other apartment properties, and that's on page five? On the top. Yes. Of the, of the properties that we have parking lots, <coughs> yes. It's their excess. They're always excess. At Capitol Square, we have 32 spaces for 32 units. We have 10 to 11 spaces available any day. So that's just a substantiation of not needing the parking. That's exactly right. Okay. That our tenants often do not have cars by choice and they utilize public transportation. And, and how does the guest parking work? You get a permit to park where? It would be on the street somewhere. Okay, so it's a permit by the police? By the police. Mm -hmm. And how do you well, get that permit? There is a whole system. I have a copy if you'd like to see it. It's, it's written up. It's on the town website. No, that's okay. I'm just, okay. And so you apply? You apply to the police. In they hope a couple of days in advance right, right, of right. when you need it, and then they grant it if they think it's acceptable. Leasing applicants prefer leasing off-site parking for tenants as necessary. Sorry, there's just different places where it's. Mentioned. Well, this is a yes. This is getting to be a little bit old. Okay, um, okay, that's old. That's part of the problem. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay, gotcha. Your variance really comes down to the use? The zoning and the fact that we are asking for no parking. Those are the two. The, the zoning meaning the use. The it's it's single units, family as opposed to. Right. Yeah. So once you have a variance for the use so that you can have multifamily. Yes. Then it comes down to parking. Right. We're asking for both. Waivers of but both if of you, them. If you had the parking, are there any other issues that would come along with the multifamily? No. no. Okay, I didn't think so. So now I kind of get it, what you're going for. And why do you need to seek a waiver from the requirement of applying for a obtaining certificate for the historic district? Um, when we uh, approached the historic district, it, um, we at that point were planning a parking lot and we could not agree on what we were going to do with the retaining wall. It was very expensive. Um, and so as we backed away from that discussion, we asked that um, we just don't have to go back to the commission. And we have no parking. So that was their issue? That was their issue. Uh, Member of the district commission, could I address yeah. that? A Andrew, it's up to you when you want to take public. Uh, I'll allow you to address that <coughs> one issue, please. We, we, we actually had three issues. One was the retaining wall. All we wanted was that it be brick-faced <coughs> rather than poured concrete, which would have cost one half of one percent of the project cost. Um, the other is we didn't want to trash things right at the street level. Sounds like they let me try to ameliorate that. And the third thing is we wanted to be sure that if they're adding windows, that they all be in a certain configuration. And those are. And they are. Gotcha. Um, and then just finally, what's then going to happen? But you're controlling the triangle. Yes, we're, um, we're going to landscape it uh, with, uh, yes, that is a potential look at, actually, I don't know where that one came from. That's rather old as well. Um, we are proposing a, a sculpture garden be put there, and we're talking to artists uh, about how we would do that. But we will do a significant amount of uh, landscaping in there as well. Sorry. I believe Pam Hytel sent me that, so she must have that. Hmm. 
So, so this is not it, but that's what the yes. sculpture got. And yes, that would be the you, idea. So how does it work? Do you walk through it? Is it public access or is it um, private to the... We would have public access only for shows, but most of the time, no. You mean for like a sculpture show? Yes. But it's owned by you? Yes. For private use of the residents or just a separate... It's just for, it's our property and we've decided to keep it open. Not and related to Not related okay. to so the nothing building. nothing to do in the, in the end. To the, the tenants are not going to be sitting okay. out there. This is a right. open space. It's just basically <coughs> open space. Great. But there's no fencing around it, right? There is fence along Westminster. That's where the, uh, the retaining wall. Uh, but, at the top of the retaining wall. There isn't the, fencing. But on the other areas, there is. Yeah, no, no, there's no fencing. Okay, so it is, it's visually open. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like fenced off like it's a private courtyard or something like that. So it's, 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 it's private land, but it's, it's not fenced land, off. private land, but you'll allow public private access. park owned by the Housing, the Corporation, housing Corporation of Arlington. Right. Okay. I know it's... Kind of or as long as you want to keep it as a private, as a park, or is it, what's the... Our intent is to keep it open. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's it. I guess one other question. Is there any handicap units in here? There are three. Um, how do you get to it? I'm just, uh, uh, off of Westminster, there will be a new uh, ramp. There's a, currently a ramp as well, and that will be a better ramp. Here? Yes, this is the ramp, right. Okay. And then down here, on the there are actually three floors, and on um, there, there will be wheelchair accessibility both through this door and a door is this, this way. There will be two disabled units in what is the lowest level, but it's above ground on the Lowell side. This is very steep yep. here. So um, when you look at the building, it looks from Westminster, it looks like a one story building, but from Lowell, it looks like a three story building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the accessible units will be on the very lowest side, except for this one, which will be ramped in. And that'll be at the second level, right? Third, actually. Third, oh, okay. Yes. So it's someone, okay. I have, no other have you considered making a, a usable open park to the public? Um, at this point, no. You mean donating it to the town? E donating it to the, yes, to the town. Hmm. We had not considered that, no. Do you have other prop other? open spaces like this that are owned by the housing corporation? Um, well, most of our property has, you know, some. But not, it's part of the property. Now, this is an independent... Well, it's all part of the same um, parcel. I mean, there are two parcels there, but it's part of the same right. piece. But nobody can go on it except... Well, no one goes on it now except right. we so specifically give permission. It's an open space, but it's not a usable... It's it. Uh, we're not giving it to the town, so it would not be a municipally owned town. Park. A municipal <coughs> park, you mean? It wouldn't be a municipal. Park. Right. I'm sorry. Right. 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 Okay. I, I see where Annie sort of came to. I'm not sure. I'd be, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I was. Uh, well, that means you guys will be maintaining this. Absolutely. Okay. We maintain it now. I mean, last year we spent a lot of money maintaining the site. Okay. And we fully yeah. intend to do it. In the future, right, but that's you know, that's you just it will be a it's a pretty predominant air, uh, thing in the area if you still mm -hmm. let it go, mm -hmm. and that'd be that'd be a shame. Mm -hmm. Well, we're planning to do um, you know permanent plantings uh, that are perennial, that you know would be very attractive. The church across the street does it well; they do it with all their volunteers. We don't see that that would be a problem for ours either. either. Okay. I'm assuming you have a uh, landscape architect working on this, or mm -hmm, we do. So they'll probably keep this area kind of low, just knowing when. There's you come. a tree there now. Mm -hmm. No, but the tree's fairly high up, so when you come around the corner, you can see cars coming in the way. Oh, absolutely, yes. It's the only thing that you know, if right. you put too much stuff there, it's going to block. We will definitely section. keep. Yes, we'll definitely view. It's leave the views. Tri tricky. It is absolutely. <clears throat> we actually had talked to uh, a traffic engineer to come out and see if we. Get, donated the point of our land to the town, was there enough space to create 
a roundabout to solve some of the traffic problems. And he said, no, we'd have to take this from the church and that from that piece. And so we gave up on that. That's too bad. I know. <clears throat> have you worked with the town at all on any sort of traffic mitigation, the way that it's, it's four stop signs and one free for all? Well, we've talked to them and what they keep telling me and as this traffic engineer did is we've gotten to the point where we think it's as good as we're gonna get, mm -hmm. so. Okay. And I understand that it's it's nine units. It's one studio, five one beds, two two bedrooms, one three bedroom. Right. Right. How many people do you expect to actually occupy the entire building? Well, we probably expect no more than four or five children. Okay. Um, and then we, at maximum, we could see what five, six, seven, eight, maybe eleven. You know, adults, because mm -hmm. a lot of the one bedrooms will undoubtedly be single adults. That's typically who we have in our one bedroom units. Okay. And will you be giving preference to people who don't have cars? I mean, that's, that's kind of difficult yes. to control. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, you may actually find that traffic is better now that there won't be a school there with families coming and Completely going. Completely <laughs> agree. Wrong. And actually the school agrees too. <laughs> <laughs> the headmaster actually stood up at the community meeting and said, you know, I want you to understand once we close the school, your mm -hmm. traffic problem will I'm sure. be greatly diminished. That's part of that problem. Um, what kind of input have you received from abutters on either Lowell Street or Westminster? Um, we, we had our community meeting back a year ago, November. And at that point, they were concerned about parking. At that point, we were proposing uh, one parking space per unit. Mm -hmm. And they were nervous about that. They didn't like the idea of us utilizing the green space for parking. That was going to be the only place that we could put it. Right now, it's green space. They wanted mm -hmm. it to remain as green space. Um, that's, that's the kind of input we've had. Now, at the ZBA meeting, there were a few people that were objecting to um, having it turned into a multifamily building, one, one abutter. Um, and um, there were some other comments about affordable housing. And what about the construction impact? How long do you expect the project to take? There you'll have some year, traffic issues. A year, maximum. Um, because we're not doing a lot of work to the exterior of the building, we already have a brand new roof on it, um, it'll be mostly interior work. So yes, we'll have trucks parked along the side, mm -hmm. um, but we don't anticipate a lot of work on the exterior of the building. But you so. will be doing a lot of work in the courtyard area, which is now the playground. We'll be taking the playground out, yeah. and we might be doing some staging there just so that we can, um, mm -hmm. you know, utilize but things I'm on the inside. Looking at one of the plans, excuse me, it does look like <clears throat> you'll be renovating that area and adding in some Really not very much. Not much? No. Most of that's existing? That's all, yeah, that is all okay. existing. We'll be removing the uh, okay. the playground I equipment. now. Mm -hmm. And just upgrading that for tenant use? Yes. Okay. And we'll be rebuilding this uh, stone wall that's down here. But other than that, down most of, yes. Lowell? Right. Okay. But most of the other work will be interior, basically. Okay. I think that answers my issues. Okay. Thank you. Laura, anything? Uh, no, I just wanted to ask you if, you know, whether you wanted to submit a comment and if so, what, what you would like to see. And I, I will write it for you and run it by Andrew or all three, I can run it by all three of you, it's only three people. That's sure. Easy. Andy. Uh, can you make it a condition that they will not own a car? Um, I think we can make in a condition of the lease that they don't plan to park illegally um, and that they fully are aware that there is no parking mm -hmm. provided for them as part of the rental. Okay. Um, I don't think it's legal right. to tell them they cannot own a car. And I, I this, in some way we're very interested in this, I think, in this open space and the benefit to the area. Mm -hmm. and in what way could we be made aware or the zoning committee be made aware of any changes that might happen to that Absolutely. as a basis for their approval of the... Mm -hmm. Are you planning to fence it in any way? 
Uh, th we have a pipe fence that's there now that's been there since probably 1959. And it's been repaired and replaced as we've gone along and as other owners have gone along. We were planning to keep that because it's sort of in keeping with the look of the building. Uh, that's So we were not planning to replace that. We are planning to put a bit of a privacy fence probably like, like along here, but it would really not be seen with because we'll be putting uh, plantings along the outside of it. That's just for the benefit of the uh, tenants off of Westminster, this side of Westminster. Mm -hmm. The stairs will be made more safer, I guess I would say it. Um, right now people do use it to go from Lowell to Westminster. And they'll be still be allowed to absolutely. cut through. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. Can anything anything further? No, I think the ZBA should be able to handle this. I, we don't have any comments. Uh, I mean, the information you were given wasn't all coordinated, but the fact that you're answering it and giving me different things, I think, have answered most of our questions, right. most of my questions. And I think for the most part, I'm fairly comfortable with this. I think um, you said it yourself in the in the application, but I think you're right. I think it does meet some of the goals of the town. It's a low impact yes. on the neighborhood, yes. and it may actually see improvement as yes. far as traffic, as far as parking, um, certainly as far as pedestrian use yes. goes, especially if we can ensure that this open space here is able to be utilized by abutters and neighbors. I think you might actually see this be a nice little start uh, for that entire square to be. come up a little bit. That's our hope. Yeah. Good. That it's a seriously positive that would be nice. project. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It's not 7:30 yet. It's not 7:30 yet. Yeah, but it will be in two minutes. Can I go get a glass of water? And like yeah, we'll take a recess and, and then begin right at 7:30 with yeah. the uh, zoning amendment discussion. Um, so I'll write a comment letter to that effect. I'll start doing it I think tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so right now there's a notepad going around the room. If you'd like to speak, uh, please put your name down. We'll call on you uh, in the order that you've signed up on the sheet. Uh, tonight we're only going to be discussing proposed residential zoning amendments. We have been discussing uh, potential mixed-use amendments. That discussion is going to take place at our next meeting, which is going to be on February 1st. Uh, I'm sorry if you came out for that tonight, but I don't think you did. Um, this is a continuation of discussion that's happened over the last several meetings. In our last meeting, some uh, town meeting members and other interested residents had asked to uh, present a PowerPoint presentation and make some comments. So while that sign-up sheet is going around the room, I'm going to ask that when Al Evans come up to go ahead and, and make that presentation uh, and then at that point, we will open the floor to public comments. Thank you. Can I just um, proceed by talking about the master plan a little bit and Please. how we got to yes. this place? Okay. So um, during the process of doing the master plan, the, the um, general comments that we received were that people wanted to see more um, revitalization and development in the commercial areas, but they wanted to try to protect the residential areas from... Um, Overdevelopment, and so the the staff has been working with the building inspector and the and the redevelopment board and um, uh, the master plan implementation committee to sort of craft some modest changes to the uh, residential sections of the zoning bylaw to control the size of um, new additions and new um, new homes being built. Um, and during that process, we've also been working a little bit with um, a neighborhood group has come to some of our, to one of our meetings previously to um, make sort of some counter proposals. So that's where we are. We're not at the point of sending anything to town meeting yet. Um, and we wanted to kind of vet some of the different ideas and, and hear what, what the community thought. Um, I don't know if you want to dim the lights or if that's going to throw everything off. Um, <laughs> My fault this time. Oh, fine.
So um, my name is Winnell Evans, and thank you all very, very much for the opportunity to present this. Um, I can probably get through this pretty quickly as soon as everything connects um, and uh, run through this in about six or seven seconds. Um, this came about, I've lived in Arlington um, for about 30 years now, both as a tenant and as a homeowner. And I run and walk all over town. Um, and I've rehearsed this 900 times, so I don't know where on earth it is. <laughs> Sorry about this. Um, should be here. Still searching for signal. Uh, is that the problem? <laughs> yep. We're connected. Everything's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anybody want to order? Offer oh, some tea up here? No? Okay. All right. Well, you know what I may be able to do? This is not optimal. But I can also. Wait a minute, it's not hooking up? It's not for some reason. I have gone through this a gazillion times. She's, good. She's not getting the signal to the projector. Right, yeah. right, right. right. Some reason. She doesn't have the signal to the projector. Yeah. Oh, right. And it's is all. There a, is there a talk we did a run through direct when I got in here. It was fine. Is that the right spot? This happens to everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It never yeah. Try to Does anyone know how to well. get the signal to go to the projector with the map? It works very often. Yeah, she gets the signal. Try unplugging it all and replugging it all? Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that. Yeah. I'll just use the right one. It says VGA. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was. <laughs> should be the other port, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then there should be something on here that. Well, it was here. Yeah, no, she doesn't have a problem. Maybe it could be just a little fresh air on here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is there a light like person? Thing in here that turn, it on. turn it off and turn it on again. Yeah, that might do it. Yeah, okay. it you should be there. No. Oh, wait a minute. Give me one more chance. No, it, it should have been. It should have been connected after you changed the port. It's on the wrong port. Well, no, we switched switch it because the other one working just okay. to, so you can read it. Ah, yeah. oh, technology. Yeah. Uh, it's better if this goes on first. Okay. I've got a sequence here. Wanna hit it again? Yeah. Take a little while to reboot. Yeah. Well, like I say, worst comes to worst, I can show it on my computer. Which <coughs> is not that much smaller. So why don't we do that? Um, we'll do the, the less optimal version. Sorry about this, everybody. Uh, so, anyways, uh, as I was saying, this came about, and I think it's a really good idea to do this tonight because it's a good visual reminder of what is at stake as we discuss um, the zoning changes that are up. So I've lived in Arlington a long time. I run and walk all over town. I have seen an explosion of teardowns and new construction going on, which I'm very, very concerned about. Um, and I began thinking about this project months ago as a way to bring attention to this issue. It is not my intent to signal out any one specific house. I'm trying to show a larger trend that is going on in town. Uh, then the master plan process came along, which I participated in, and found it to be fascinating and was really happy to see that uh, the clear findings of this master plan <coughs> process show that people love their neighborhoods and want to preserve them. Uh, they're concerned with both the scale and the character of new development and the ways that it's changing our neighborhoods. So the main issues that I hope to show with this um, PowerPoint are that these new homes are much larger than those they replace. They are much more homogenous in appearance. 
Prices have increased rapidly because of the size of these houses. Builders are clear cutting the lots and we're losing tree cover faster than we're replacing it. Their size means that we're losing the large yards and the sort of casual, informal green space that are so important to Arlington. When we tear down older homes that are in good shape, we're adding materials to landfills. This is not a sustainable process. And many cost of community services surveys show unequivocally that new residential development costs a town more in services than it brings in in revenues. And anecdotally, as I traveled around shooting these pictures, I talked to a lot of neighbors who were, without exception, oh my god, um, <laughs> they were, without exception, we'll see if it shows up, um, unhappy with the changes in their neighborhoods. So the first category that I want to take a look at are the duplex style houses, which are all over town. Um, most of these replace front yards and hell strips with driveways and very wide curb cuts. Almost all of them involve clear cutting of the lots. Each unit in these duplexes goes on the market for $650,000 and well up. This is prohibitive to many, many people trying to move into Arlington. And no matter where they are built, they are all the same. We are looking at losing our distinct neighborhoods, such as the classic East Arlington two families and the smaller single families of the Heights. And as you look at these, if you can see these, you will notice a lack of trees and green space. Very homogenous in style. The second category I want to look at are the oversized houses. Uh, where we see that lots that once held one house are being developed to hold two, in some cases more. These new houses are much larger. Once again, we're losing that informal kind of green space, those little bits of wildness that are so important to the pedestrian experience and the overall feel of our town. We are running the danger of becoming like Cambridge with every backyard filled in and every lot developed to its maximum potential. Um, again, these involve the clear cutting of the lots and the loss of mature trees and much, of course, higher prices. Most of these go on the market for $800,000 and up. Um, and again, this is not to single out any specific house. This is to show a trend that is happening all over, house, all over town. Here we see a huge mature tree being cut down to make room. Uh, this particular development, we see a backyard filled in with three or four condos and then a parking lot. So that's two backyards at once gone. Um, and just very, very large houses that are going up. I have also put together um, some before and after slides just to give a sense of the scale of what is going on in town where smaller two, three, four bedroom houses are being torn down and extremely large houses are going up, um, overwhelming the neighborhoods in many cases. And in this one with the aerial shot, you can see a really good indication of what happens with the clear cutting for the lot. This is a lot that held one house, was completely, the trees are all gone now. There are two very large houses there going for over a million a piece. Um, but there is good development, positive development going on in town, and I also wanted to show that to end on a positive note. Uh, there is new construction that is using finished materials and design, which is in keeping with the neighborhoods. There are renovations that preserve the street face of the house that add the square footage in the back or on the side. There is construction that is trying to preserve trees that does not clear cut the lots as it goes and that maintains a sense of scale in relationship to existing houses. So it can be done. And then finally, I have some suggestions to preserve the character of Arlington, which residents have said is so important to them. I would like to ask that we consider taking the master plan recommendation that demolition permits go before the historical commission one step further and implement hearings for neighbors prior to granting demolition permits. I would like to think about considering um, a policy to protect older, smaller houses in good shape so that we preserve some semi-affordable housing in town and make it possible for people to live here who can't afford million dollar houses. Um, we desperately need to regulate the removal of mature trees as other towns do. And in the PowerPoint, I've provided links to the tree policies, um, bylaws in some other towns. 
And I would also like to ask that maybe we consider requiring the planting of one or two trees on new lots before an occupancy permit is granted. I'd like to see, uh, ask that we maybe consider discouraging certain finished materials, as Watertown does, uh, and probably other towns that I didn't get to in my research. Um, and finally, as we move into the discussion to amend the, the zoning bylaws, as in the draft amendments, which you all have, which are now up for discussion. So thank you all very much, and I'm sorry for the complete total meltdown. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Who knows? My pleasure. Sorry about this. Ken or Andy, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, not at this time. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first on our list is Joe Barr. As I call your name, just reiterate your name, uh, address, and whether you are an Arlington resident. So Joe Barr is first on the list. Hi, uh, Joe Barr. I'm the, I am live at 24 Park Street in Arlington, um, and I was a member of the Master Plan Advisory Committee when I was active, and I'm now a member of the Master Plan Implementation Committee. So I just wanted to really quickly um, kind of just say from the perspective of both of those committees, this was, as Laura alluded to, something that we heard a lot about, um, and we know, I think, that there are certain things we can do and certain things that we legally can't do to address the situation, but it was certainly something that you know, from the public and from the members of the committee was something that we heard strongly and I think many of us felt strongly about. I'll, I'll admit that I'm someone who lives in what I consider to be well, not the most egregious of one of those houses that you're referring to, at least our driveway is in our basement, our garage is in the basement, um, which I think is one of the less desirable outcomes of many of these. But I agree that we need to do something within the limits of what is sort of acceptable both legally and to the community. Um, but I think just I just wanted to state from the committee, both committees' perspectives, that this is something we think we, we thought was very important, and we're you know glad to see that we're starting to make some progress on this issue. I don't know that what the the ideas that are being put out, you know, from the staff end and the and the implementation committee's ends are the, the 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 best answer, but I think it's starting to address the problem, and so we're hopeful that something you know moves forward to 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 start to address the situation. <laughs> Uh, Bill Coppathorn. Uh, Bill Coppathorn, Sweeney Arcana Real Estate, uh, also an Arlington resident. Uh, got a few thoughts on this. One of the concerns I have is uh, I've, been, I've been involved in a number of these projects actually for full disclosure, but uh, a lot of these properties that are being sold, they're being sold by, you know, longtime Arlington residents that have been here 40, 50 years, you know, paying, paying their taxes and their way to secure their retirement is to, you know, is to sell these properties for their for their highest price. And a lot of these properties, due to the owner's ages or whatever, you know, certainly fallen fallen into a little bit of disrepair, uh, you know, making their highest and best use at the time of sale to be sold to a developer. And uh, you know, I'm all for preserving the character of the town. Uh, I've been here all my life. Uh, not, not going anywhere. Um, but I think with some of some of these um, you know, restrictions are going to make uh, it impossible <coughs> for some development on these properties, which in turn <coughs> would, you know, affect, uh, you know, the value of the property, uh, you know, for these people that have paid their taxes for, you know, for 50 years. Uh, and it could have, a, you know, a very negative impact uh, on their, their later years in life. Um, as far as clear cutting, you know, trees and such, I don't know of any developer that's going to cut down a tree that he doesn't have to. Uh, you know, it, it, it may happen, but uh, you know, I, I would agree if there's a restriction in there for, you know, plant planting a tree before an occupancy permit is uh, presented. I I don't see issue with that, but with um, you know some of the other proposed changes, I just think it would make you know future development in this town very prohibitive. And you know a lot of the houses that are being replaced uh, are in such condition that they, they they need to be replaced. And if you look you know look at some of these these neighborhoods where there's there's rows of these you know old, you know 50s 40s and 50s two family homes that are uh, you know look, looking their age and they are being replaced with larger homes. But I for one find them you know pretty pretty attractive. Um, as far as the numbers, you know, I think they, you know, they do add to the tax base, but I guess there's, you know, surveys that show that uh, that's not necessarily necessarily the case. 
But uh, just a few of my thoughts. Okay. Uh, John Warden. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, <coughs> um, we have um, uh, made available to you um, our um, proposed uh, amendments to deal with this epidemic. Um, and I know there are people in the room who will uh, disagree with some comments now that uh, every bit of land should be exploited to the max because somebody can make some money out of it. Um, uh, th that's not a sentiment that I share, and I, and I hope you don't, because we, 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 are, we are all, no man is an island, we're all a member of a larger community, and, and, and that community is our town, and, and, and if, we, if we turn our town into an anonymous bunch of look-alike <coughs> vinyl-clad boxes, it ain't going to be like the town we love anymore. So, <coughs> um, I'd like to briefly review the, the five articles we presented. Some of these articles are um, uh, in, in parallel thought with the work that Ted Fields has been doing, um, and uh, some of them may be somewhat duplicative. Um, but, um, oh, and, and these, uh, uh, these, uh, these articles uh, are to, they may not be the perfect responses to problems, but there are problems that have been identified in part through the research uh, and, and our own observations um, of, of the way the current zoning bylaw has been abused, let me say, to, uh, uh, to create some of these larger homes. Uh, so the first, and they're not in any particular order, um, the first one is, is to deal with the height issue. And, and all of you are familiar with the, 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 the building that has a fully exposed basement and two floors and then an attic, uh, which is um, like a third floor, or a fourth floor, if you will. Um, and, and, and the way that is done on a sloping lot is really by uh, the rather curious way in which height is calculated. And the first article, which I've called A, is, is to uh, say height will be measured from the bottom to the top. And if, if you have a grade on the property or you create a grade or something, that, 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 that's not going to count. Um, the second one, uh, and, and this is tricky, uh, the, the, the half story. And I know uh, Mr. Fields has um, looked at this. Uh, we've looked at, at, at provisions in um, several other communities, there doesn't seem to be a, a terribly good way to get at this, and we, we had a brief discussion about this when we were with you in December. Um, but this is, this, is, this is a stab at it to make sure that a half story really is a half story, not, not a bunch of, of, of oversized dormers and, and the like. Uh, the third article um, is um, uh, addresses a, a very uh, a, a, a very uh, concern that, that has been brought to my attention a lot. Uh, the, um, the fact that if you have a, a group of typically sized houses, one and a half story, two and a half story, but at the typical height, uh, and then you put one of these McMansions next door to it 10 feet away, or well, it could be 20 feet away depending on, on where your house is sitting. Uh, you may lose your sunlight, you may be cast into shade, uh, you're certainly going to lose your view. Um, and, and so the idea is you may require a, a little more space, another 10 feet. Now, now if, that, if that little house that happens to be there is already 20 feet in its sideline, then you don't have to change the sidelines. But, but a little more, so, so, so there's a minimum of 30 feet between buildings instead of 20 feet. Uh, the next uh, uh, item is the um, is, is the one that um, again we, we talked about this briefly when we were with you in December, um, and this is the large residential additions, and and the um, basically what we're proposing is that we would we would take away that exception for building in the original footprint. Uh, and we would um, uh, basically, if you tear something down and build something new, that would be considered a large uh, residential uh, uh, extension. And, 
and, and the, the real purpose of this is uh, that it's to give the neighborhood a say. That's not to say they can veto it, or, but they can come to a hearing before the zoning board and, 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 and have their say and, and maybe get some requirements on that new building that will not overwhelm the neighborhood. And there's some other criteria uh, mentioned in there. Um, the next, uh, uh, the, the, the next item is um, is uh, the, if there is one single point that I've heard the most objections to in my travels around town, my conversations with people, uh, particularly during the um, you know, recent. Uh, season where you get to go to more parties than usual, at least I did, um, um, is those two garages staring you right in the face and, and that, that wide curb cut um, that, that, that is, is, is the whole sinecure of, of this new large building. And so those people want, want to theoretically park their cars, although I know many garages are just filled with junk and the cars are outside. Um, so we propose to push that uh, if, if, if that garage uh, opening is at the uh, front of the house, it, it should be pushed back 10 feet. Um, and and re 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 perhaps uh, and, and, uh, Mr. Fields' uh, uh, amendment has something about parking. I couldn't quite understand what he was getting at. But I think it's, it's important uh, to, and you know yourselves, you, you've looked around town. Those garages staring you in the face are a very unfortunate looking uh, appearance and we, that, that's an attempt to deal with it. Now the gross floor area, uh, both Mr. Fields and, and we have, have um, tinkered with it um, and, and try to make the gross floor area really, yeah, the gross floor is going to be basically all the whole building, not, not and we worked with some exclusions and so on. Uh, to, to limit the exclusions to things that really ought to be excluded and to include things that, that really ought to be in there. The, the language of the definition itself is a little murky um, uh, and it, it, it needs some cleaning up. Well, we also dealt with the seven foot business. Um, uh, and um, uh, that was the, uh, F and then um, the, uh, the, final, uh, the, the final thing is uh, to, to uh, address a, as you perhaps know, um, there's a there's a backyard requirement of 20 feet between the building and your back your back line. But if if your lot is extra shallow, uh, you can do it with half the some complicated thing. Um, uh, 20 percent of the full lot depth. So if your lot instead of being I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to do the arithmetic right here off the top of my head, but uh, basically, uh, our feeling was: well, if you've got an undersized lot, say a 5,000 foot lot, or like the one next door to me, 3,500 feet, 2,500 feet, um, then you should be able to use this exception. If you've got a uh, a, a 6,000 foot lot, you should be able to find a way to put the house on it and still have have have, have that 20 foot backyard because that faces the next guy's backyard and why should your house be so close to him? So that, that is the, the proposals we have. We had hoped to be able to, um, to, to, to work with you uh, in, in, in jointly going to town meeting with solutions to this problem. Um, of course, unfortunately the calendar is kind of catching up with us now, so uh, we may have to go ahead and, and, and file these articles and, and proceed from there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Loretti. Can you move me to the end of the list, Mr. Chairman? Is that... Sure. Okay. Uh, Joe Baum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to bring up a, a few points in... Where are you from? I'm from Arlington, sorry. 74 Mystic Street, Arlington. I've lived in Arlington for three years. I've worked in this town for around a little over 15. And um, I just want to point out the fact that you know, each one of these duplexes, which I think is what we're all talking about here, um, directly employs 30 to 40 people. And myself included, I'm a carpenter. So, I mean, I have four kids, and um, this will directly affect me. This amendment will directly affect me and my children, and a lot of other hardworking people that I know will be 
uh, potentially put out of a job if this passes. Um, and I would also, you know, like to echo some of the stuff that Mr. Carpathorn said. Um, these buildings that everybody is so set on preserving are, you know, sieves. They, they, they're just, uh, they're not efficient at all. A lot of them have asbestos siding hanging off them. A lot of them are structurally unsound, and the people that own them have, you know, worked very hard to pay for them, and they want to sell them for as much as they can get. And uh, that's, it's going to, that, it's also going to affect a lot of elderly people in this town that want to sell their house and go into retirement. Um, also, everybody's talking about how these homes that are being built are an eyesore. And, uh, you know, I'd just like to point out the fact that these houses are selling the first open house. So somebody likes them. You know, you, you know, the people in this town, you, you know, uh, that are trying to get this passed may not like them, but that's <coughs> their own opinion, you know. Uh, and it's also important to understand that these are ener energy efficient homes, and they cost a fraction of, uh, of what it takes to heat and power the other homes. So, I mean, it, it, it I think that's, you know, <clears throat> there's not a lot of people that can pay, that can afford to uh, fix up the houses, the older houses. So, um, I guess that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. John Belskis. John Belskis, uh, town meeting member from Precinct 18. Uh, I, I got two views on this. Uh, you heard earlier the opportunity to provide more affordable housing in Arlington. That's a concern. Uh, People that uh, grew up in this town can't afford to stay in this town. So Arlington has worked hard to create affordable housing. I've seen at least six small capes in good condition disappear. I don't know how the developers get first call on them, because the sign goes up at uh, 3 in the afternoon and the place is sold before sunset. Uh, so I, I think there's something going on where these things never really hit the market. The fact is we're losing affordability in Arlington. Now I'll take off the Affordable Housing Act and talk about what happens when you get one of these. Because I got one right next door to me. If the screen had cooperated, I also have a video with a soundtrack that'll scare hell out of you. My concern is we seem to be playing right to the edge of the existing zoning laws and permissions. There was a small cape next to me. When it came up for sale and all of a sudden was sold and I heard there was going to be a remodeling, I went and took a look at the building permit. Very simple. They were going to remove the roof, remove the second floor, and build from there on the same footprint. Well, I'll tell you, that stretches the imagination beyond belief, okay? The porch was a temporary type porch on cinder block foundation. How it was considered part of the whole house, fine. That's our bylaws, and they let it stand. The whole thing was demolished, basically. They left the floor of the first floor and two walls. I guess there's some glitch in the inspectional surfaces that says, oh, it doesn't need a demolition permit. We left two walls up. We're just remodeling it, okay? Uh, as I watched progress on this thing, the porch came off completely, but they didn't use the same footprint. They extended it and put in a full foundation so they could put up a full structure. There was a single garage that was on a pad. That, of course, came off, but then they extended the pad by putting in a full foundation. If you ever heard an excavator with a jack power jackhammer going for seven hours of the day, shaking stuff off your shelves, rattling your windows, they had to break the ledge so they could extend it to put in a full foundation. Because what was a single story garage with a roof went up the two floors to fill the structure. You've got a picture of it in the presentation. Unfortunately, we couldn't put it up. 
I have a bone to pick with inspectional services. That's not your interest. The site was a disaster. I sat with this almost a year. I used to go around the neighborhood picking up the debris that blew from the site. The materials were dumped all over the place. You want to live with something like that, it would be a joke. They talk about us older folks, and I'm an old retired guy, okay, on fixed income. It's just unbelievable what goes on with the construction on these things, okay? Yeah, I'd like to sell my house. If by chance I had to sell my house while this was going on, my value probably would be cut in half because no one would want to live next to what was going on next door to me. They sell within a week? Eh, I got some, I got some questions about that because this damn thing sat on the market for a long time. I understand it's sold now, but I haven't seen the papers pass. We're destroying the character of Arlington. There's dozens of these in my neighborhood, literally dozens, and they're all huge houses. And unless you've had the experience of being next to one of these, and these developers are all fellows that talk to each other, you've got some people in your community that basically do a crappy job maintaining the area, and we have to live with it. When I have to walk down the street to pick up wrappings from material to keep my neighborhood looking de decent, something wrong here. I think they've pushed the edge too far on building these buildings. This is well outside what the house was. If they had stayed on the same foundation and did what they said initially, fine. I don't see my morning sun anymore because it's right on the 20-foot line and it's three stories plus high. we got to do something. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Rector. I'm, I'm going to um, pass because I thought this was after another presentation, so I'll, I'll save my comments. Okay. Uh, back to Chris Lurie. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you for putting me at the end. I, I'm, uh, you know, it, I think it's hard to understand exactly what's being proposed without kind of going through the details of the bylaw, zoning bylaw as it exists and what the changes are. And I would, um, I don't view this in any way as trying to prevent redevelopment of existing properties or even prevent teardown. Um, you know, frankly, I agree with a lot of developers. There's quite a few houses in Arlington that um, could be tor torn down <coughs> and, and with new structures built in their place. But I think the issue really is how does the current bylaw read and are the structures that are being built um, consistent with the spirit of the bylaw? And I view this more as a tweaking of the existing definitions. When you have a limit of two and a half stories and look at some of these houses and look at the top floor and nobody would ever consider it a half story because it looks exactly like a full third floor, then I think we've got a problem with the way that the bylaw is written and the reality. And similarly with, with the height of the building, that they're supposed to be limited to two and a half stories high and 35 feet. Um, you know, in the research that we've done, the way that Arlington defines some of these things and a lot of the exceptions and loopholes written in the bylaw aren't there in other towns, in other cities. And frankly, I'm not sure in some of the communities like Somerville, which we would consider a much more densely built community, you could get away with a lot of the things that you can get away with in Arlington. So um, I guess I would simply say to everyone here, particularly those who have concerns about this, um, you probably haven't seen the details yet. And before the bylaws actually change, those details will have to be published. This board will have to have a formal public hearing, and you will have, have the right to be heard. Um, so I would simply say I hope we can continue this process. I think Ted Fields has, has made a very good start on a lot of these things. I think in some ways you know, we'd like to go a little bit further. But um, I think we need to look at, particularly look at the existing buildings, not the smallest ones from the old houses on the lots, but look at the biggest ones from 50 or 100 years ago on the lots and see how they compare with a lot of the new construction. And I think you'll find that a lot of the new construction is bigger than the biggest of, of what people value in the character of our lifetime. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment before I open it up to the board? Yes. Um, name and address, please. Gabriella Lawrence, 109 Bartlett. Um, I don't know any of the details of the laws here, and I can't speak to people's aesthetic <coughs> judgments. It's all a matter of opinion. But one thing I would like to say is that 
I have obsessively watched the real estate market in Arlington for 15 years. I know every house that has been sold in all this time. I don't know why I watch it so carefully, but I do. And um, regarding people who want to sell their houses and cash in and go off and retire, I don't think they're the ones who are making the money. Because when you watch a house get sold and you see it sell for $750,000, then watch the plot be subdivided the original house, whatever happens to it, I'm not sure, and a new house get built, then you can watch the sale of those two houses. The first one, which is now in a much smaller plot of land, half of it, selling for a good $100,000 more than the original purchase price, plus the new house going for upwards of $800,000. So somebody is making a lot of money, but I don't think it's the original owner. Okay. Can I just add that? In other communities, what you're seeing is um, people stuck in houses. You know what I mean? They can't afford to fix their houses. They they can't get what they need to retire, or, or you know, they they can't sell them, and they're literally stuck in their houses. And you see that in other communities. That that's my parents are going through it right now. You know what I mean? Had they had a crystal ball, in bought a house in Arlington or Newton or Somerville, they'd be in a very different situation. So, I mean, you know, just think about the people that these things employ. Think about the, the they do make the money. The, the people that are selling the house, they, they instantly make the money. Sure, the developer makes more, you know, then takes it and, 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 and makes more from it, but of course they do. You don't want your homes to be worth less. You know what I mean? That's, that's it. Any other Comments? I don't know if there's anyone out in the hallway that wants to speak. Kid, yeah. right. any comments? Um, are we commenting on this draft amendment right here? Andrew, just is, is Ted going to present? Do you, if, do you want? Uh, it might be useful for actually. I think what so. What is being presented by the yeah? I think I, I, I think that yeah. would be helpful. Yeah. Ted, Ted, do you want to come in and summarize what we're proposing? What <coughs> staff is proposing. The board. Um, this is nothing. I just want to say for those who were at the last meeting, this is the same proposal as was here at the last meeting. We have not changed it, but for, I know there are many people here who were not at the last meeting. So um, Ted's going to summarize the changes that are being proposed at this time. Do you time want me to do a quick staff. summary or a point? A quick point. summary. Quick well, summary. Quick summary. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the chair has spoken. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, we basically propose uh, changes in three areas. Um, the first is definitions. Uh, we, as Chris already mentioned, we really look to uh, tweak the existing residential zoning regulations instead of make real wholesale changes. Uh, so we. Uh, we tweak the definitions of basements, attics, um, and gross floor area, as well as the definitions for stories, half stories, basements, and cellars. Um, we also uh, in I, I just wonder, Andrew, since there are developers here, I mm -hmm. think maybe they would like to hear exactly what the changes are that were. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. What do you think? Okay. With the, with the changes. With the, the detail? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, getting into the details of our change definitions, uh, we propose to amend the existing definition of a story uh, from uh, four feet six inches um, above the, or I'm sorry. With the cellar. That's right. Um, yeah, no, no, I, I yeah. Uh, well, I'll start with a basement and a cellar. Uh, a basement right now um, is not determined to be a story if it's uh, less than four feet six inches above the uh, average finished grade. Uh, we propose to change that to three feet six inches. Um, and the same thing with a cellar. So if a cellar is uh, more than three feet six inches above the finished grade, it will be deemed to be a story. Um, and in terms of an attic, 
Uh, right now, it's not deemed to be a story uh, if its height is less than seven feet three inches. Uh, we propose to change that to come into compliance with the Mass State Building Code to make that seven feet. Uh, and so, Ted, <coughs> just let me jump in. So, those two things are aimed at at reducing the amount of of, of FAR really of, of gross area of the building. Well, it really addresses um, kind of the apparent the apparent height, height, um, height. above right. the so, finished grade, and so it's just a it's just a, a way of around the margins. Yeah. So you don't want to count your concerns. basement as as floor area, right? Because you have a limited amount of floor area that you're allowed to build by our zoning code, right? So uh, well, floor area is not regulated right now per se it only accounts for the amount of usable open space you have to provide okay. on the lot there's no far requirements right. or anything like that in existing zoning so it's really and just we're not proposing any in these right so it's just updates. aiming at reducing the height yes to help manage the apparent height of some of these structures mm -hmm. okay and then the other one in the attic is saying that you will be counted as a floor area unless you're lower than seven feet so it's right. encouraging you to Right. Right well, now, uh, under Mass State Building Code, uh, you can have a habitable space if it's more than seven feet tall, <coughs> but it won't count as a story uh, or be considered in the calculations of a half story if it's under seven feet three inches. Right. So, this so is, we're bringing the two in conjunction in agreement. Right. Yeah. And it's to reduce the overall bulk of that top floor, that half story. Right. Around the, the margins. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, uh, with gross floor area, uh, right now, um, we, uh, there is language in there um, in relation to counting attic space uh, at seven feet three inches tall. We revise that down to seven feet, again, to bring it into compliance with the Mass State Building Code. And uh, we also um, include accessory parking garages in the calculation of gross floor area accessory parking garages means parking garages that are within the main principal home structure not detached parking garages but parking garages that are built generally underground under as part of the basement um, and then, so that's the definitions section uh, moving on from that uh, after discussions with the master plan implementation committee and the inspector of buildings um, we also propose to increase the amount of gross floor area required for open space, usable open space on a lot in R0, R1, and R2 zoning districts from the current standard of 30% to 40%. So in other words, if you build a 3,000 square foot gross floor area house on a lot, right now you have to provide 1,800 or 30 percent or I'm sorry 900 or 30 percent of that space as what the zoning bylaw defines as usable open space this would go up from 900 to 1200 square feet under that particular hypothetical and then finally um, we propose to um, uh, in just really to uh, preserve um, you know, efficient drainage and uh, uh, safety for uh, ingress and egress to these uh, lots or to new homes. We propose a maximum uh, driveway slope of 15% uh, throughout the uh, throughout the driveway. Um, just that's in line with many other communities that have uh, driveway standards for residential construction. And. Um, and again, garages that are attached to the principal residential structure will be included in the calculation of gross floor area. Mm -hmm. So those are the three areas that were proposed to change <coughs> in our scenario. Yeah. Right I, I want to point out to people that haven't been part of this discussion to begin with, that this is not uh, an attempt at wholesale changes in completely restricting right. development. Um, many of the things that have been suggested are simply to bring what Arlington has has done and, and allows in line with state building code and what some neighboring towns uh, 
allow. I speak for myself, but I think I speak for the other members of the board as well in that we are very concerned uh, with what people like you have to say. We don't want to see people like you stop building, you know, and, and we don't want to restrict you from being able to make a living in any way. This is simply a way to make sure that the things that are built kind of <clears throat> comply with the existing character of the neighborhoods that they're in uh, and are there to keep things in line and um, preserve the neighborhoods and, and jive with what some of the other people here have requested tonight. And, and well, I'd, I'd love to well. see, like, you know, meet halfway, like maybe some design input or something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But like the, 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 the changes in the square footage, mm -hmm. and that's gonna that's gonna kill the the, the, the the you know the new homes right there. <coughs> Can you, can you uh, clarify that again? I'm not exactly well, I mean, if these amendments pass, you won't see any more duplexes. From from what I understand, I think it'll be pretty it'll be pretty much impossible to do. What? I don't see how the, it, it would be possible to build, you know, what we have now, if this is if this goes through. I think what your concern is the way they look. You say they're an eyesore. You know what I mean? So is there some kind of, you know, meeting halfway and design changes? Maybe more of a, a an older look or something? You know what I mean? Just a suggestion, you know? Ted, do you want to respond to that? Uh, generally with zoning, uh, zoning is more concerned with sizing and massing and placement of buildings on a lot. It's generally less concerned with aesthetics and the way things look because it's so subjective uh, you know what one person considers <coughs> attractive another person might not um, but you know it's if that is the will of the board uh, that's something we can investigate uh, I don't know if it's practical for us to do uh, but we could certainly take a look at I just it. threw it out there because I'm yeah. hearing a lot of people <coughs> sure you know yep. complaining about the look of the house and, and I understand you know if every right. house you don't want every house in town looking the same yep. you know what I mean but I got to say that, you know, the, the building that went on, they all look the same. You know what I mean? All the two family houses, they all look the same. You know what I mean? So, you know, maybe you put a hip roof on one and a, a, a gable end roof on the other. Or maybe you put a gambrel on one. You know what I mean? And you've seen that a little bit. You know, you've seen the designs change just a little bit. But you got to understand from the perspective of the developer, it, it, it's a tested product, right. you know what I mean? So uh, just just something to consider, you sure. know what I mean? That there's a, a lot of different things you can do with home design, you right. know what I mean? <laughs> something more aesthetically pleasing may be a good common... And it might work to the benefit of... of sure, the benefit. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. What will a new normal look like? Yeah. <laughs> will everyone love that? <laughs> Well, everyone not now. Well, if you look what they do in like Lincoln and Concord, you know what I mean. You see like a a lot of different. You see mansides. You see gambrels. You know what I mean. Maybe if you. I see two acre zoning. What's that? Two acre zoning. I'm not talking about the zoning. I'm talking about the look of the house. David, do you want to talk about the, some of the shots that you've done as far as massing? Um, sure. So we did take a crack at essentially how large could you build something under current zoning and then how large could you build something under our proposed zoning amendments. Uh, <coughs> we have some copies for the audience, too. Yeah. So. Why don't we share one yeah, so we can share one. So we can pass those out amongst the audience. Okay. We can yeah. share two. Share yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. So these are in very draft so format. Essentially, the the first page we have uh, house one and two. They're more or less identical from the top plan view. The difference in these two being <coughs> the basement height. So it goes from four feet six in number two to three feet six in number one. And the open space requirement due to the GFA increase is changed from house number one to house number two. So for this, if your driveway is on the side of your home and not underneath the home, 
the changes are essentially in the basement height and the open space required. Any questions so on that? A one foot change. Can we make time and get some copies? Sure. Uh, there's another copy. Can you send me back there? I think they have them. Is that a one, one foot part? change? Yeah. In uh, it'll be a one foot change in building height above grade for the basement. You're still not restricted on height and how high you can build the building. It's the height requirement will still be under 35 feet. So in the first page, there's no drive, there's no garage. And so um, the changes that would be affected by having a garage underneath are not shown on the first page at all. Okay. But on the second page is where you see the garage underneath scenario. Right. So on the second page, uh, you're essentially, this is a single family home with a center driveway, 20 foot curb cut. Uh, the driveway going into the basement here. So the difference here being that the front yard setback for the house number three goes back to 36 feet as opposed to 25, which it's currently regulated at due to the driveway slope. And on this particular scenario, the open space pretty much stays the same on both sites, even though the house number three is actually smaller. Um, go ahead. That's assuming that the site is sloped. <coughs> Uh, the driveway is sloped. The site would be, it's the assuming site the site is, is level, level, site. level site. The driveway will often be sloped in. Yeah. So to drive down underneath the uh, structure. Drive into the basement. Into the basement, essentially. Well, okay. What I'm what saying is if this house is in the hill mm -hmm. and he just drives straight in. Oh, yeah, well, sure. That's, that's, a, different, that's then, a different right. scenario. Then it's yeah. not just 35. No, no, no. no, no. no. This is a this is level site. site. This is a level slice slope driving down. So level 6,000 square foot rectangle. Yeah, no, okay. by, by changing the required slope, you push back right. Right. the front of the house, yeah, by changing the driveway slope. Okay. Uh, so, any other questions on that? In the front and the bottom of that page, you see the size Can we keep it down in the house. audience, please? We, uh, you'll see the size of the structure on the bottom. We'll allow time for additional questions. So, moving on to the third page. Quite similar to the second page with the um, change being that we move the underground driveway slightly to the side to accommodate the, uh, the current bylaw has an open space regulation that you have to have 25 feet horizontally in every direction to allow for the open space requirement. So by moving the driveway slightly to the right in both of these scenarios, your 25 foot, what is essentially a circle, uh, can fit within the front yard setback. And so your actual building can go right to the rear yard setback instead of having it be uh, pulled forward by the open space requirement. So are you counting the 10 foot setback here on the <coughs> uh, as open space? The 10? Looks like you are, yeah. Right? yeah, on the side yard. Okay, right. yeah. The way they tell me down there that you can't do that now, so you're going to be able to do that? Can We've do that shown now? this to the uh, building inspector, and he says that this interpretation is OK. So that's okay. So you're still looking at the two garage doors that nobody likes in the front. But right. if you move it back 10 feet, it's all right? Yeah, it's, it's farther away from the street. It's but, I mean, you want to know a real quick cure for this? Yeah. yeah. I build in other towns, OK? Mm -hmm. All you got to do is give us a driveway on each side of the house, and get, we'll get rid of these garages underneath. It's a pretty simple process. Sure. This town is the only town that regulates us to one driveway 20 feet wide. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is because we can't have a driveway on each side. If I put a house in Belmont, I can put a driveway on each side. I don't want to put the garage underneath, but I'm, I'm forced to do this by the town's zoning bylaws. What do you mean a driveway on either side? Just put a driveway on the side, side of the in house. The side, yeah. Get rid of the whole thing in the front. On a two-family so house. Yeah. John Wooden yeah. doesn't want to see a garage in front of the house. Yeah, yeah. On a two-family okay. house. Two family. On any house. So yeah. would you have no garage? Or would you have a no garage. garage. We don't need it. It's more work. It's more work. We don't want to do that. All you, you got to do is you don't need it to sell. Give us that. Nope. Give us that zoning bylaw that we can put parking on each side. We can't. You realize we're forced to do that by this town's zoning. By having just one curb cut. A curb cut on each side. Yeah. It's a pretty simple thing. Yeah. Ten feet yeah. on each side. Now, now you're talking about your basement square footage, okay? If you take that away, you just reduce the size of this house. If you look at number two here, see number two has the reduced size house. Mm -hmm. Who in their right mind is going to buy that house now? You just you you totally you're totally killing off all building in this town as anyone knows it. Period. It's done. 
You'll never see anybody building this kind. Is that what you totally want to do here? You no, wanna... why would no one buy that house? People like bigger houses. Pe people want new houses. I was discussing this matter with my 15-year-old daughter before I came here. She said, people want to buy new houses. John Wood lives in the biggest house on the biggest lot in this town. Not true. John, you have a huge lot. When you were my lawyer when I was young, you have the biggest lot in this town. And, and you, you represented me. You made all your money representing guys like me. And now you want to stifle everything in this town. It's hilarious. It's, it's, how many hundred dollars that bill was. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm not saying you shouldn't do some zoning changes, okay? But you need to work together here. You're just totally cutting it off at the knees. That, that's it. There's no you, what some guy who wants to put a dormer on his house can't put it on. Is that fair? This is America. Is any of this fair? Like, think about these zoning changes that are being proposed. Here. It's a total stifling this building as you see it. And as for the picking up the trash. We are constantly chased by the Board of Health and the Building Department. I get calls every day on every one of my jobs, and I build a lot of houses. We, we do our best to totally pick up and clean up our jobs. Can we get your name? And John Carney. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. If you look at the house number one, that, that's the house you want to build, right? That's the big one. What page, yeah, what page we want to build that house first. Page, page one, number one. We want to build that house. We, so we don't what, want to do a driveway. So we want to just, get, just in defense of this process. They they are trying to discourage the big underground driveway. Right, but where do I put the parking? I have to give four car parking. This is not. This isn't a two family. This is just a single family. A single. But, but it's all it's all about the two family. We should do this for the two family so we can show that condition. Mm -hmm. We, 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 we'll, we'll, there's no problem if you go over to Belmont, Watertown, anywhere else I build a house. Winchester, you're allowed a driveway on each side of the house. Why does this town have that strange zoning bylaw? I've gone before the board before when I built a house on Warren Street. They denied me. Warren Street's a busy street. They should have just given me two driveways, but the, the, the hand is being forced here. I don't see why this is such a big deal, why, why we can't just work this out in some normal fashion. Too bad didn't put a warrant out of it like we have. We have to change the zoning right. to work it out. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Right. No. But, but, but you, you understand, like, he works for me, okay? His family depends on what I do, him and the other 40 people that show up in every job in every house I build, including all these real estate brokers you see here, get commissions off what I do. Do you, do you guys care about any Absolutely. of that? Absolutely. Yeah, and we do. Yeah, Thank the, you. the whole idea of the character of the neighborhood is to keep, to be a great place to live. And I think two comments that came up. One was John, outside of normal practice. I mean, at some point, you, you don't want to build so big that it kind of wrecks the neighborhood. You suddenly got a beast there. And I don't want to move in here. I'd rather move over to that other neighborhood where everybody seems to. Literally, yeah, that's a, that's a, I'm on Mott Street, right? That's the that's the first comment. Then the second was, I think it was Chris that said, "Bigger than the biggest." So I don't think these are aimed at these are aimed at <coughs> tweaks that start to limit that start to try to drive the best design, the best building practices, the nicest houses. You look at some of those things that were put up. I mean, they're they're not the way. I don't think the way the town go wants to go. Plus. You're not going to lose money on building houses if they're just tweaked to be a little bit different. They're not but, but see, but They're see, not boxes. That these have tweaks are going to kill it. That's what yeah, we're that's that's saying. I don't think no, so. you, you're wrong. That, that's your opinion, okay? And our opinion is, if you look at this from a monetary standpoint, most of these people you see in this room right now are all about developing. Like this guy's my electrician right here. Okay? Right. If I if I stop building these houses, he's out of business. But why are any of these? Because you just totally. I think you've got to look at the detail of it rather than making a categorical it, statement. It's yeah. all about the size. Once you increase that green space, we're building a smaller house. Once you once you add that the basement garages into the story, this is all designed to completely stop development. If the numbers don't work, the numbers don't work. Is, is, when the basement is included in the total area, mm -hmm. does that limit the? 
size of the house in the lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Cool. And Absolutely. these, in these yeah. two scenarios, no. number one, two. You just told me that the FAR was not. The There's no FAR requirement. What well, limits the size of the house if you put a basement, a garage in the basement, is the slope of the driveway. If we may make it at 15%. I'm just talking what, about the three foot six now for a minute right. versus the four foot six. Mm -hmm. So that says that if you build below three foot six, that area is not counted. Right, correct. Why if we put the garage there, it is. Why does it matter? Well, if you put the garage there, you need <clears throat> about you need at least oh. seven foot six for a garage. Okay. So right. it is it is it is getting at the below grade garage. Right. Okay, so that's an issue. It's cool. right. So is there another way, like you're suggesting? We, I mean, the the below grade garages is something we're trying to discourage. Yeah. But where do we put the parking? You put the parking in the back along the side. But you just... You in a garage. The, you you're allowed to have a, 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 a green space. You ate up the green space. <coughs> well, let, let's... The yeah. green space. I, I just want to say right now that we are listening to you. We invite you here to the meeting so we have a dialogue to discuss this, okay? Yeah. We're not sure. trying to shove this down anybody's throat or do any other thing else here, okay? It's an open discussion, and this is not going... This is not going as is. So... Okay. So Thank you. take that I as take that. that as something, and we're valuing your, your opinions, okay? And I do have one question for you, and I want to ask you is, by making these tweaks that we've done here, right? I see that um, the biggest tweak right now is the gross floor area uh, for when you have a car below grade, it goes from 6,500 square feet to 4,800 square feet and it goes from 6,900 square feet to roughly a little bit on the 5,000 square feet. And are you building single family houses right now that 5,000 square feet? We, we, it, it, this isn't about single families. This is what this example is showing right here, okay? Right, but the, but, the, but the truth of the matter is they're trying to get us to stop building these duplexes. I'm on Mott Street, I'm okay. building a duplex right now. Like Billy said, the house is lined with old two families that have fallen down. What's so bad about us taking out an old two-family and putting in a new How many square family? feet? Can you tell us? Yeah. How many square feet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got two feet. Like, how many square feet would it be? What, what specific? Make your question more clear. How many square feet is in the duplex that you're building on Watt Street? It's of, about 4,000. Of living space? Yeah, living well, space. Yeah, and, but gross. He's, he's basing this on uh, <coughs> 6,600 square feet. He's basing it on the outside perimeter of the house. We, we have to sell our houses no, but what I'm on saying what's the inside. In this example, all this green space is based on the, on the floor area of the house. Yeah. Right. And his house is a 6,600 square foot right. house. You guys aren't building 6,600 square foot but houses there's no lot on 6,000 square foot lots. And I don't care if it's a one, two, or three family. There's no here. lot that, that we're going to build that. It's not efficient. But you're not building that big anyway, is my point. You're telling me you're building like 4,500 square feet. <coughs> but that's just an example. But, but the reason there's so much green here is because the house is so big, is what I'm saying. Right? Yes. Yes. So you've got about 50% more green here because they chose the biggest house they could get on that lot. Right? Right. Okay. Okay. And that's why it, it is. We're really going to get into the detail on this. So we ought to. I'm not sure this is the, right, the best. No, that's what, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. I'm saying we're not trying to. You should take your comment and test it with a two family house of that size and show what it, what it would mean. Yes, I think that's a very good comment. And I mm -hmm. think we should try to come back next time. Because I, yeah, I think. And, and see what actual changes there are for this thing here. So we vet it. So for two families, is that what you asked? Yes. Yeah. That yeah. they do with two families? Yeah, two families. absolutely. Because that's what. That's apples and oranges right now. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a, uh, one comment back uh, back to the, the duplexes since we're on that. If, if you were to have to include the garage space on that, I calculated that earlier today. It's like uh, 721 square feet. So if you take if you have to use that as in the calculation as part of the living area, that's reducing 721 square feet you have above it. Okay. Right. Graduate graduate limit. No. It's not. No, well, there is no limit. There's, there's no, no limit on area. floor area. There's a limit on. Well, there's no, no limit. No, it's just, effect the only that's there's the effect that will have. Yes, space. that 720 yeah. square feet of garage space will affect the amount of open space, space you have to provide. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Because Correct. it yeah. will make the house so bigger. Yeah. Well, to try to match that, you've got to take it away from living space somewhere on one of the upper floors. No. Well, no. There's, it depends on the size of the lot. If you have th this is there's what we show here is yeah. Yeah, this is the minimum lot size in an R1 district that we show, and an R2 district is 6,000 square feet. 
So that's what we're showing here. That's what we're testing against. The one on the front, on one and two, are 6,000? All the lots we are 6,000 square feet. And then also, on, I'm listening to what you're saying. I want to comment on you saying by making these tweaks, uh, it gets rid of dormers that, that someone want to add you to a house? You can't use the third. You just took away the top floor. What, what, what he's saying is, one, one, he's talking about adding on top of houses, too. If I'm if I'm understanding him correctly, if I may, well, you know what I'm saying is the bylaw right now limits your third floor to a half story. Right. Um, but if you see what's being built in a lot of cases, it looks like you're building a triple decker. Looks like and what you're using inside is two different things. How it looks is what's important. But he just said it's all about the numbers. He said you're talking you're not talking about aesthetics. You're going by numbers. I'm going he's by massing and the right. numbers. Right. He's talking about aesthetics. Over here. No, no, no. So what no, are we talking I'm, I'm talking about? about Excluded the fifty percent. Well, it seems That's like right. the, the purpose behind this conversation is to address scale, mm -hmm. and the reason that these amendments seem to be proposed is to make sure that houses remain in scale with what's surrounding them. And so, I, one thing that confuses me is that it seems. You're, you're suggesting that people only want to purchase the house, the largest house that they can purchase. Is that necessarily true? People don't want to just There's purchase a certain the segment largest of the market house. That is, it's true. But uh, there is a certain segment of the market for whom that is true. But there must also be a segment of the market who wants to buy a house they can afford in a neighborhood filled with smaller scale homes. And that's what I think this is a conversation about. Is it not trying to maintain a certain Yes. Relative scale. So if there's a huge house next to another huge house, sure. But if you're trying to squeeze a very, very large house onto a lot where it just doesn't seem to make sense, I think that's what the zoning amendments would address to make sure that the house fits the plot that it's built on. It's a good point. We're, we're talking about two different things here. We're talking about the way things look and then the numbers. So it, it's good to you know, differentiate between the two of those. That's why I think that there can be some kind of common ground here. Like what, uh, you know, what is the main concern? What these things look like? Or how big they are? Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, those don't have to be the same thing. I mean, you know, like, like you said, this is all subjective. It's a matter of opinion whether you like the look of a house. And size and look are, are, are related, but they're not the same. So you can build a big, gorgeous house and a small, ugly house. It's going to be all your opinion. I think it's these, these laws are addressing how big a house should be. So that that is the issue, how big they are? I believe that's okay. the only thing that can really be mandated. I mean, yeah, we can talk that's about building materials right. mm -hmm. and making sure that they are in keeping with a certain, you know, uh, you know um, style within a neighborhood. But I don't think that you can really regulate what a house looks like unless that's... Um, well, they're saying that they, they don't like the way the... The, the town is beginning to look. That's why, you know. Yeah, that's being discussed, but I'm not sure that's what's being addressed. Or what we want to live next to. Okay, well, it would be good to figure out what we are talking about here, then. You so, know? Ted, it, you're, these amendments are talking about the size of the house. These are addressing the size and the scale of the house, yes. Right. So, Period. This, they're just the size, not the aesthetics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nobody cares what they look like. No, we, we do. either. No, we do. We do. We do. We It's yeah. kind of like, you know, first you're thinking of light and air and how it, if it seems too bulky. Before you're talking about aesthetics or materials. I think a lot but of the garages are going to disappear if you give the two curb cuts. If you, right. if you did that for them, and it's something to look at. Like, and do the yeah. two curb cuts, yeah. now you're going to get rid of those two ugly garages, mm -hmm. so you don't have to move the house back, yep. and you don't have to have the slope. Ted, the, the relationship <laughs> of the three foot six, <laughs> mm -hmm. it which is dropping and the never seven foot. foot. Look oh, upon, I in, tried it on Warren yeah. Street eight years ago. Oh, okay. I got and it on the inclusion of the garage and the house that gives you a that adds more area to the open space calculation. To the open space calculation, which has to do with lot coverage. Well, it it open space. It open space. Yes. Chairman, how many discussions are going on? <laughs> Would you guys you keep it down while we're having a discussion over here? Thank you, Mr. Warden. So basically, what we're saying is those two things, the three foot six cellar right. and the seven foot in the attic, eventually affect the overall open space. 
It, so it helps to affect the amount of open space right, so under our proposals that would have to be provided. So the more space you want to put into the house, the more open space right. and setbacks you need. So it's right. it's trying to say if you're if you're getting really close to to the other houses, you have mm -hmm. to be lower and smaller. Right. And if you're getting well, the bigger you want to get, you have to have more open space around you. Right. So it's trying to fit the house to the neighborhood. Right. And it's using the metrics of the zoning code right now. It's using the device. Right. So it's good that we're having this discussion to make sure these mm -hmm. devices are working. We think right. having worked with the, mm -hmm. with the implementation committee, and these guys, he took a shot, David took a shot, mm -hmm. he threw himself out there to do these diagrams. <laughs> they, can, they can be tweaked and they can be adjusted to be right. a little clearer. Um, we're, we're trying to get at those issues mm -hmm. with the, you know, these zoning issues, which are a little bit of a, it can be a little bit of a blunt instrument, but you're trying to do right. it mm -hmm. very incrementally so that it's not a big change. Take us developers totally out of the picture, okay? You're just some regular guy <coughs> come along and you want to tear down a house. You, you just want to build your wife and yourself your dream house. You're not doing that. Oh, yeah, we are. No, you've got your dream house in Arlington. I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. I, I think by you. taking away what you're saying, you just, you just stop it. You have to seriously yeah. think about that, like the common person. I think I think you do. I'm listening to John John's comments. He wants to live in a neighborhood where one guy's not, you know, dominating the whole thing and blocking his light and air and so forth. You know, who the wants character. To live in the neighborhood? Every, everybody. Everybody will line it up. Everybody. Wants there's bidding wars. Everybody wants to live in a neighborhood. You know, there's no more here. It's what you just <laughs> said that people aren't going to buy these houses, and I want to argue that nothing gets built within 128 that is not going to sell immediately. And I think what we're, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think one thing we're talking about here is not only the visual character of the town, but less tangible character of the town. When I moved here, my neighbors were the dog catcher, a family of electricians, and a cab driver. And I am now surrounded by white collar tech workers because as we build bigger houses, the prices go up. That's, that's just a fact of life. And we have now a very different community and we are shutting people out of this town who cannot afford to come in. I grabbed the very bottom rung of the ladder when I bought my house and pretty soon everything was completely unaffordable. And I think we have to think about when we build, who are we building for? It should be for a wider array of people. It shouldn't just be for people who could afford $650,000 for one unit in a duplex, and that's low, or a $1 million house. That's, I don't know those people. You know, that's, that's a really different kind of town. That's also, in the aggregate, going to start raising property taxes for people like John, for people like myself. Didn't do a thing to the house, my taxes went up because the property values. But you know what, when you, you bought know, your house, everywhere. it wasn't <laughs> safe to walk by Spy Pond. I it was it was a very different community back then. I, yeah, didn't, feel that. I well, didn't feel that. Well, that. That, that's a fact. You, you know, I have a friend named Mike Hogan. You can get him in here, and you can, he can talk to you about, you, you know, the crime rate in the town that was well, going on then. I think that's a little bit. I mean, that's a little saying, bit outside of what we if want. You're saying, well, I mean, no, but I, hey, you know what? Thank you. It turned around real that, quick. It can go back to where it was. So, so this gentleman up front. I'm suggesting poor people commit more crimes than wealthy people. Okay. No, I'm 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 committing 20 okay. years ago. Okay. Had a very, very that's a separate discussion for for another time. That's something else. Hi, front, um, please. My name is Steve McKenna. I live at Four Upland Road in Arlington. I've been selling real estate here in Arlington for 30 years. I think there's a reality here that what everybody's trying to achieve, and that's mutual respect for your neighbors, for the town, for putting up zoning, putting up housing, and making people feel comfortable. The reality is, Arlington for the last 30 years has been more affordable and more accessible than our surrounding neighbors. We're more affordable than Lexington, Winchester, Belmont, and Cambridge, no matter what's happening with the pricing. We can't control the pricing and stop the market from increasing if that's what the buyers want. Buyers are now moving into Arlington and staying in Arlington, as opposed to a decade ago, they were leaving Arlington, going to different school systems, and leaving Arlington because they didn't have the housing that Arlington offers. The harsh reality is that we're no longer a blue-collar community. We're no longer a community that has just farmhouses or farming. I'm sure 60 or 70 years ago, when the Down School area was being developed into all these Cape-style homes, people were in uproar. But that's what the market demanded, and that's what the market needed. But I'm sure that they all work together in understanding what they had to build. There is a demand in Arlington now and a need for housing. 
more so than we've ever seen before. In my 30 years, this is the fewest amount of homes ever for sale. Now, in reality, can some of the houses be better, attra more attractive, have better housing? They can be. But that comes with costs. And you're saying you want more affordable housing. I see the numbers on a seller's end when they're selling a home, on a builder's end when they're building it, on the people who are buying the home. The buyers would love to have a cheaper home if they could. The builders would love to build a cheaper home. But they're paying higher numbers now for all the cost of construction, no one can deny that, and the cost of labor. Builders, and, and everybody hates the builder, but builders are making a lot less money now than they've ever had in the past. And no one wants to hear that because they think the builders are making big money. The reality is this is a town that's in growth and will be continuing growth because of what people want to do. They want to live in Arlington because it's accessible, because of the diversity, because all the changes over the last 30 years since I've been here that changed the bike path came in, the restaurants were allowed, liquor came in, they allowed the zoning to change in. These are all positive changes. The changes doesn't make everybody happy all the time. So there has to be a mutual respect and understanding. Some of the changes that are proposed here as far as zoning, to be honest with you, I think it's smoking mirrors. You're increasing the height of the basement, you're lowering the height of the attic, you're including the basement garage space's gross floor area. So now, how does a builder charge that? Now you're going from a 2,400 square foot house to potentially a 1,900 square foot house. But that person's gonna pay the same amount of money for a 2,400 square foot house of living space where they're not getting 2,400 square feet of living space. They're getting a lot less square footage because you're now including the garages and living space, which means they're gonna be taxed on that as living space later on. So it's not fair to them. So there has to be an understanding. I think getting a group like this and getting developers and getting yourself and getting to work together and getting the neighbors to understand what can be done. Not everybody is always going to be happy. But Arlington has changed and it's going to continue to change because we are always going to be close to every major university, every major hospital, high tech and biotech. People want to live in Arlington. And the sadness is, yes, people that grew up in Arlington, most likely a lot of people can't live here unless they're making the money that everybody else is in the high tech and the biotech area. It's a harsh reality of life. It's a part of life. But this is a town of growth. And you think not only in the residential area do you have to look at development, you have to look along Mass Ave. You have to look at a way to start helping the stores out and the shops out because that's what's going to increase business. You can't just be looking at the residential end. The residential is a good portion of opportunity here. It's a good portion of growth. But everybody who's living in Arlington wants to shop in Arlington, and they have limitations for doing that. So the, the, it, I think it's a mutual respect that everybody has to sit down and work out together. There are things to be done, but no one's ever going to be happy but to try to create the happiness with everyone. That's all I have to say. Thanks. If they were building 2,400 foot houses, I don't think we'd be here tonight. So, Wendy, I saw your hand up in the back and then John. Yeah, next. I just want to say, as I participated in the master plan process, it seemed like the um, mansionization is the word that I heard, concern of people who live in town. They're seeing things that are much bigger than what's there. And I wish we had some numbers for some of the typical our older um, Arlington homes in comparison with what the new construction is, because I think just looking at those numbers are significantly different. Um, um, the other thing is that it, it seems to me that the double garage facing the street is a big aesthetic red flag. And I don't know whether what's proposed now um, will really address that. Perhaps the two curb cuts might be a solution, and that's a new idea that came up tonight. And I think that even though we're saying we're not talking as about yeah. aesthetics and we're trying to work with numbers, I, I think that that aesthetic is something that I would really like to see addressed. Thank you. John? Uh, just one last comment before we all fall asleep. Uh, <coughs> we're looking at the attic space, whether we count it as a floor or we don't count it as a floor. There's a, again, there's some chicanery going on here. Because I went through the house that was built next to me when I came up for sale. I'm saying, gee, it's only supposed to be two stories, but why have they got a finished staircase going up to the attic? All the houses I've ever been involved with, the attic space was either a pull down or some other e egress into it. Uh, a full flight of stairs finished going up to the third floor. Don't tell me that's going to be an attic. And it's towering over my house. Thank you. May I make one little comment? Yes. One of the things, if you're looking at for making suggestions for the zoning and for 
these two family homes. Our current zoning for single family homes is 25 foot setbacks, 20 foot rear yards, 10 foot sidebacks. And yet, same situation with the two family homes. She's got these garages in front. The situation probably occurred 60 or 70 years ago. If you look at a lot of houses throughout Arlington, many houses have garages in the back with a long driveway. Our zoning doesn't allow for that now because you have to worry about the open space and the paved area. So there's limitations there. One of the opportunities is change the zoning. Go back to where the houses were before, 15, 20 feet from the street. Put the garages in the back, put the, whether they're detached or attached or underneath. There's opportunities there. But you push the houses further back, you limit it, you're trying to increase the floor area, the, the green space, which is good. I think you need that. And I think your, your discussion about trees is important. <coughs> you take down a tree, you should put up two trees. You should add more. And as, as a real estate agent, when we do developments in and out of town, we're always telling your developers, the greener the better. And that's what people want. And they're not arguing that. Developers have no issues with doing that, John. If I'm not mistaken, no, you don't no problem. care about that. But if, if you're going to look at it, don't tweak it. Look at the whole zoning, because you're pushing the houses back, and now you're talking about making adjustments to the side yet, the setback, and so forth. You're going to make the houses smaller, but you're still going to end up having an opportunity where the developer has to do what he has to do, and you're going to have garage unders. There's very few single-family houses with garage unders that you're talking about with the slope. Because of the zoning, they're required to do that in order to, in order to provide two parking spaces behind the front foundation wall. <laughs> People don't want their whole side yard paved. Neither does the neighbor. A neighbor doesn't want two cars or three cars parked right up against the side of their house. So the only way to do that is put in front of the house or down beneath. So again, you have to look at any other options instead of just saying we can tweak it here and there. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good point. Yeah, very. And, and, and we should get into those, those scenarios so we can look at the big picture. This is a hilly town, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. It's yeah. tough to, it is. to make that driveway slope work in reality. It only works in certain parts of this town. You're stifling it again. If I build a house on some hilly area, I, I can never make that work. It, 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 it just plain doesn't work in this town. We're, we're not a flat community here. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, discussion, comments from the board? No, I just think this is a good discussion, a good input, and we should explore these things so we see that you know what we're doing really is covering all the bases for a two-family house. Mm -hmm. Experiment with what the you know to deal with the mm -hmm. garage. Are there other ways to do it as suggested? Right. And that was what we wanted to get from tonight. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for coming out, speaking out. Appreciate it. Input is definitely appreciated, and we'll be heated as we get through to the final draft phase. Uh, potential changes for at least recommendations. Thank you very much. Thank you all. That only happens when you're actually trying to do the right It never happens at home. This is perfect. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, still trying to get something. Perfect. No, we still have to we still have a Jedi? We still have a Jedi. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it's Paris Pirates. Not much. Yeah. The, the board still has items to discuss, so if you're having a discussion, you should take them out to the hallway, please. It's still sitting there. I think it's full. I actually like you know, I think that we're getting Give him a gap. We're going to miss this. We're going to miss this. We're going to miss this. Folks, if you're having side discussions, please take them out to the hallway. Thank you. Get a Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thanks for your testimony. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Something to work with. Oh, it's Save the rabbit. Yeah. Yeah.
The guy sitting there. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to tell him that those are issues about the overall master plan. Yeah, that we're going to cover. He was talking about it even better. Yeah, it's a very good point. Thank you very much for your input. Yeah, Steve. Very eloquently spoken to us. So I know they do, but my point is, I think guys, outside, please. Thank you. Sorry. There you go. I hope that's okay. <laughs> All, right. <clears throat> All right, so next we have the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, Kim. Andy. I do not. None for me. I'll entertain a motion. I'll motion to approve the minutes. Of what date? December 7th. December 7th. Yeah, I'm not sure how much longer. Second. Where's the minutes? December 7th, 2015. December 7th, 2015. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, next is correspondence we've received. Laura, I'm going to pass that off to you. So uh, the first one is from two members of the Capital Planning Committee who have. Uh, stated okay, some concerns about um, some of the capital the capital expenses upcoming at the central school in particular and um, this is for your review and they would like to come to our next meeting what I suggest is that they be honored as an agenda I am early in the next meeting um, what I think would be helpful is um, it might, might also be helpful to have Christine Bongiorno come in and discuss mm. the Central School overall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is an ongoing project to renovate the school. Uh, we also have issues with tenants for which the ARB is responsible and holds leases with them. Um, I think a comprehensive overview of the status as of now makes a lot of sense, then we can figure out how we're going forward and have these pe folks in discuss their concerns as well. Okay. So you want to uh, report on what's in the capital plan, what's happening with the tenants, and nothing has happened with DMH and DDS since our last meeting. Well, no, but right. that means that J I'm there's empty space. So there will be. To be. So that will need to be addressed. Um, but I think that's, a, th that's something we should have early on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Time. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next thing is there's a flyer in your packet about the housing production plan, which is one of the um, one of the recommendations in the master plan was to update our housing plan, and we have been working on that. You appointed a committee in August. We hired a consultant in September, and we are working with them right now. The first public meeting is February 2nd, which will um, which will we will discuss housing needs and opportunities. And the second public meeting will probably be in the spring. Well, it will definitely be sometime in the spring, and we'll, um, we'll roll out some recommendations for um, comment. So it would be great if you could come to that meeting on February 2nd and um, hear what people have to say, and perhaps if you have some thoughts, you can add them to the mix. And the third piece of, um, of, of correspondence is something from Christian Klein, who was sitting here in the corner. He is on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and it was something that he had sent to the board in December. That did that uh, must have been right after your meeting in December. So it's um, dated December second. Oh, wait, a minute. no. It's like it's December dated the fourth. December fourth. Yeah. <coughs> did I act, did I give that to you at, at the December meeting? No, I just don't think okay. so. Okay, all right. So this is the first time you've seen that. I wasn't sure. That's what's in your packet. If it's dated the 4th, you probably didn't no, get it till the 8th. So. No action is needed on that. Yeah, we'll take these under advisement. Does any other comment work with staff to see what can be implemented on the, the bylaw drafts, if need be? Yeah. Um, perhaps we should go to talk about next steps on the new business. What, what do we want to do with, to follow up on tonight? Yeah. <clears throat> let's, let's have that discussion. Um, I think we got some 
unique input this evening. Um, I had hoped we'd get some unique input, some some different viewpoints, uh, which is why I had asked staff to to talk with some of the business community and have make sure that they were here tonight to see whether we were heading in the right direction, um, but also to see what kind of suggestions they might make. Um, I'm not sure we're quite ready to go forward for town meeting yet after tonight. I don't know what everyone else's thoughts are. I would second that, that. Uh, Andy. I just feel like there were some very good comments today. And um, I <coughs> still think we should, um, and he also suggests that we should vet this out on two family. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a very good idea. There's there's uh, there are two <coughs> things that come to mind come to my mind. Um, one is that the master plan was implemented last year. It's very very important that we don't lose momentum as the master plan implementation committee goes forward and puts things um, into process. But if we're going to be making zoning changes. They have to be done right, and they have to be. We, we really only get one shot at this. Um, understanding that you can't please all of the people all of the time, uh, it sounds like there's some backlash from the business community uh, as to what we're doing. And, and some of that, I think, was um, because this is the first time they've heard about it in a lot of, in a lot of senses. Um, but I want to make sure that it's not even wanting to make sure they have to be on board with what's being proposed. They have to be on board with what's being changed so that they can feel comfortable that they can still do business in town. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't think all of their fears would necessarily come to fruition. Someone will still build. Development will still happen. The the, the eighty year old capes are going to fall down. From the, the, they need to be replaced with things that are more efficient. Um, but I think we need, we can come to the table with something that is a better fit for the ends that we're trying to achieve alongside the goals that their day-to-day -day business seeks to. Yeah, I hope we have an easier time with mixed use and parking and that those are ready for town meeting. I think this one is actually, at a minimum, I think we might want to introduce it at town meeting as what we're doing. I think one issue is it came <clears throat> right out, and we're all used to that, and some of these people like Bruce here know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They lined right up with potentially a, a little bit of a misunderstanding about what the purpose of this thing is, or what the, what the there's, a, there's an overall purpose, and then there's a lot of minutia that Ted, I think, is very aptly put together. But you mm -hmm. have to get between those two things. So what what's happening is you're devising techniques, which I think are very well thought out, mm -hmm. in order to achieve, to move toward this more compatible house, call it that, compatible building. Right. But it's very hard to make the leap. So you've got the reaction tonight well, you're restricting us from making money. We're already on the edge. What are you doing? You're not let, you're not letting us build. But I don't think that's exact. That's not what. That's not our intention. Right. Yeah. So what and we that's have. That's not what we heard from the master plan. People right. Say we want so development to stop. We have to find a way to. Right. We have to right find a way to, not only to fr to explain it yeah. very clearly. I I needed a little education each time I hear it. That it's not F an FAR issue. It's a lot coverage <coughs> issue, which is determined by the overall size of the... Right. It's the amount of open right. space that's required. Right. That's so really what we're getting at. So and I think, I think the, you have... With the garages, with the underground right. garages, the limiting with the slope. Those all have to be explored, but there's a little bit of apples and oranges, a lot of apples and oranges going on in this thing. So he's thinking about two family houses. We're talking about two conditions. One's a flat house. Ones are going down under house. Right. Mm -hmm. When really what we're saying is we're trying to discourage the under garage condition. Well, I wouldn't say specifically to discourage it, but to um, kind of make it account for its impact on the Which neighbor. forces yeah. the house potentially into a very complicated. Right. And, and, you know, we're ta he's talking about two family houses, and, and 
mm-hmm. other folks are talking about single family houses that so are yeah. going up. And right. it's, 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 yeah. it's so all thinking, over the place. I, I think it needs a lot more work. Thinking we'll, we'll get there. But if you're saying we're not going to get there fast enough in terms of crafting this thing, explaining it very clearly. We'll I think it's better to have something well crafted and to spend time right. getting it mm-hmm. right rather than rushing quickly with something that might not be optimal. In town meetings, we've done this thing where we explain where we're going on a particular issue. This is being worked on. Didn't we do that? Haven't we done that? I don't know if that's true. Like a progress report as yeah, opposed report. to yeah. a proposal. Yeah. 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 I don't Did remember that all, but we could. I mean, I, I, I think that. if we I, don't... Do you remember doing that, Bruce? I think that we talked about the fact that we were undertaking the master plan process and... Right, um, right. The planning director gave a report as to where we were in that process to explain why we weren't coming forward with a big slate of warrant articles. So mm-hmm. among the among the things that the implementation committee has been recommending, based on the town's vote, are these things. Two of them are coming up as warrant articles that we think are ready. Another one is being contemplated or worked on. I mean, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with you. I don't think we need to pull everything off the table entirely, but I think some of the, the, the more detailed items mm-hmm. Still, well, I'm just talking about this residential thing. But yeah, yeah. So will we get there? Yeah. <clears throat> no, I, I think we're. We'll find out on February first whether I'm right. I think we are close on the mixed use aspects of things. Yes. At least I as far presenting that is another ball of wax. Right. But the the bylaws that the, the drafts that are out there, I think are 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 there. That and the parking, I think I agree with you. Yeah, I guess the one thing I'd say, I think that if you look at the from the the community perspective, the the mixed use has the potential to seem like a, a big concern from the sort of people who are supporting the residential change, and vice versa. The the mixed use may give the development community something that mm-hmm. they're looking for. So I guess I would just not to say it's determinative, but just to encourage you to think about: is it, do they make sense as something that gets paired because there's a little bit of something for everyone? Obviously, yeah. they can proceed separately, and there's there's no reason they couldn't, and they have. Merit on their own, but just in terms of thinking well, I think strategically I, about how it gets passed. I mean, there'll be separate warrant articles, so they can one could pass and one could not. The mixed pass use in right. parking could be perceived as pro development. Correct. Very easily. Very, yeah. Right? They're bigger. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That could be it's bigger. Pro development. It's the type of development that people want. Yes. Yeah, they've right. said in the master plan. That they said they want. It's in there. Right. 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 So you're getting one if you're pro development, maybe you're, and if you're sort of, I don't want to say anti development, but. Pro contextuality yeah. or whatever, but it's also I mean it's it's know, it's different to... kinds of development. But it's also different kinds of developers that do that. Yeah, that totally different two people, two different developers yeah. doing that. You're not getting yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, the guys well, I mean, we don't even really know who's going to do single family mixed use development because they don't because it hasn't happened yet. Right. But, but I mean, I guess yeah. I'll just also put the perspective mm-hmm. that if I had a nickel for every time a developer had told me that the thing you're doing is going to kill me, and then develop, you know millions of square feet afterwards, I wouldn't have to go to work every day. So it's like, there is this aspect of like, it's just change is change and they don't, I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily think that they totally understand their market. They're building the biggest thing they can build. Mm-hmm. I bought my house because of what was, it was what was available, not because it was like the thing I wanted to, yeah. to, to buy. They're not, they're not building custom houses. They're not going out to and a that's, and market that's the and saying, this right is right what now. I want. Yeah. They're saying, this is, you know, I can build this and people buy it. That doesn't mean it's what, that nothing else would ever get bought or get built now. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a hard one to argue against because they, you know, they know their market certainly better than we do. I do. And, and I think it's interesting also, uh, we heard at one point someone saying uh, that design, that scale, that's been tested. So they know that works, right? Yeah. And then if you have to change that up, now you're introducing uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they don't know if that's going to work. It might. It might. But yeah, it might not. You know. And so you may see you may see some sort of chilling effect where development slows for a year or two as developers recalibrate. Figure out yeah. what yeah. can I do. Right. And uh, just in speaking about the garage issue, I have heard from several realtors that people willing to pay Arlington prices for new homes want garages. They don't want to have to park on the sides and shovel their cars out or whatnot. They want a garage vehicle that they can get in and out of every morning if they're going to pay the perceived premium for living in Arlington as opposed to for 
Framingham or points outside of Route 128. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. But the, these guys can have garages, right? Yes. This could have a garage, or is that the, ma the maxed out number one? Well, that's no. that, 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 that's in the, the brown area, <laughs> right. right? That's a garage. No, no, that's 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 no, just. No, I know it is, but could it be? It, no. it. It, there's a lot of technicalities there. There might you might be able to fit a garage there if you reduce the size of the house. Why? Because of the overall green and tan. It has to do with uh, how far you can build in the setback. Right, uh, and the whatnot. setback. Right, and then it gets into other so, issues. So there's a lot of technicalities. So I, I can't. I think testing these that. garages is key, yeah. based on input. To I personally, from a personal point of view, I like garages that are attached to the principal home, but you have the side entrance. Right. There's a number of those in my neighborhood that are very attractive, uh, and they, they meet the needs of the homeowner, and they meet the needs of the neighborhood not to have them front and center on the front of the facade. And I've looked at ways of kind of um, promoting those. They're, it's, it's, hard, it's a hard thing to do with zoning to try to... I found that, I found, I looked at those studies way back mm -hmm. when I used to practice. Yeah. Uh, it's much harder to do right. with a 6,000 square foot lot, right. okay? It's nearly impossible almost mm -hmm. uh, because of setbacks and everything else. Right. And the easiest thing to do is if you want a garage to have it detached in the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With its five foot setbacks and right. stuff like that. And that is the best. Mm -hmm. to, to accommodate a house that fits reasonably within the lot, that mm -hmm. lot size and have enough open space yeah. and have a, a, a garage. Mm -hmm. um, I just did not, I could not, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. And, and like everything better, else, you know? garages are getting bigger too as you know, cars are getting bigger. And yeah. Yeah. Although eventually when you have the self-driving car, your garage can be really small and it just <laughs> yeah. slot right, right. in. Or the ones that fold up by themselves. Yeah, I mean, I think the, from the, the other thing I'll say from the master plan implementation committee's perspective, I think, is that you know, although on the one hand we do want to see the momentum continue and want to see things pass, on the other hand, if our if one of our first one of the first zoning proposals that comes out of the master plan, you know, dies, you know, in a public way, as opposed to just deciding to pull it off the table and see if we can get you know make it better for next year, that's obviously not a good outcome. So I think you know, strategically, there's a you know, we'd rather live to fight another day, as it were, than, you know, sort of push, push, push. And, and spend time it. developing a, a, a much more viable... Yeah, I think you're right. Whoever said that, you know, you get one shot at some of these, and then you're not going to talk about it for another five or ten years. Yeah, I think this is one of the ones. It, it's a big one, and I yeah. think it needs to be done, but it's it's one shot. Yeah. <clears throat> so so I, I, what I'm thinking um, is if we don't put forward an, um, a proposal, that probably the other group will put something forward. Yep. It then has to go through this group and will be the subject of the public hearing because any zoning that's proposed for the warrant goes through the redevelopment board. So then what, yep. what will end up happening is that we will end up having a hearing on their proposal. Yeah, and, and then you, we can say yes or no, we recommend in favor or no action on their proposal. So I, I think that they are primed to put something in. But maybe the, I know maybe that's not a bad outcome, but that's what I would foresee happening. Well, I mean, it sounds like their proposal would be much more radical, right? It would it's have not crazy effect. radical, but yes, but it, it would be more than what it's, 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 it's so not. It's less yeah. Yeah. it's not it's over more, the top. It's more form based the way that. It's whereas right, yes. you're trying to be very strategic in. Correct. So what I wanted to do at the beginning of the meeting was to see if we could reconcile their ideas. Some of them, I think, could be adapted mm -hmm. and organized. Yeah, some of their ideas, I thought, could be. Well, they, one thing I really want to tease out by talking to brokers as well as some of the developers is the two curb cut idea. Because uh, I, two I, family. Or, or even in Waltham, for example, even a single family home, you're allowed to have either two 10 foot curb cuts or one 20 foot curb cut. Right. Uh, so, you know, that I'd like to explore that a little bit further and see how viable that is because Mr. McKenna seemed to indicate that, you know, for some developments, neighbors might not like having two sets of cars on either side, right. either of the side yards. Yeah. That might be cause more of an impact than uh, having garage space or well. something like that. 
I have everything with the required setbacks. It's might be okay. Yeah. And it, it, it does away with one of the main problems we've been looking at, which is the sloped garage right, the giant. Down with the giant curb cut. Yeah, that's true. And I think if we can get rid of that and get rid of the, the huge street facing garage, yeah. then. So strategically, if we're going along, as you say, Laura, then we would be working on it and have some comments that say we're not ready to that those amendments that are being proposed. So we have to vote for no action. You see, <coughs> in other words, do we keep working? But I'm supposing, hypothetically. It's we, not hypothetical because before January 31st, we have to put something in. Okay. It doesn't have it's, to be Well, specific. it's not hypothetical because if we don't do anything, we will. They're right. doing, okay, yeah. but I'm saying that, that we get to that point, we're still working on it. Mm -hmm. And our point is, there's some real concerns about how this really plays out. Right. Um, so, because I don't want to, to your point, I also don't want to see it get killed by anybody. You see, if, if they propose, <coughs> no, that's just no, as bad. You're it? right. If, if, it, if it doesn't come from us and it comes from someone else and dies, then you're right. That it's even worse. That it looks worse. Even we can go and we can give a report and we can say that this is something that's being worked on and we recommend no action on, on this uh, bylaw amendment, but they'll come in under us anyway, right. bring it in. But then it's not our proposal. I don't think it matters. Do you think the issue would be poisoned in the lines? I think the issue would be, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or it would be, well, I suppose if town meeting passes it, then it is the will of the people. But it, it may be more restrictive than what we want to see and, we'll, and, and won't necessarily take into uh, consideration all of the other options out there. Uh, I think... There's, well, no, I won't go further, but. So I, um, guess, I guess just to, to anti-Semitic go about trying to sort of bring the two together, I'm wondering if is there, would it make sense to try to get, I mean, there's a, there's a resident, there's a subcommittee of the implementation committee that's been working on the residential issues to get that group together, maybe with the, either, you know, some group of the redevelopment board and in the next, in the relatively near future and just kind of figure out, okay, is there, do we think we can come up with something that's at worth at least worth trying to push forward that you know comp that tries to get the two together and take into account the the feedback that was received tonight and try to come up with something that can be I guess the the, the, the bar seven public hearing is kind of the, the critical deadline and what then whatever the lead in from in terms of ARB action mm -hmm. is or is that do you think that's just not feasible to get that amount of work done in the next whatever month and a half what do you think Ted I think it's worth working with the, uh, the housing subcommittee of the Master Plan Implementation Committee to talk with representatives of both sides that we heard tonight and see if there is some sort of middle ground that we could, you know, work to kind of modify our existing proposal that I have mm -hmm. and, and kind of bring all of the input we've received into that and bring something forward. Um, I don't know about the chances of that being successful, but it, I think it's worth a try. Uh, and I think the Master Plan Implementation Committee is, a, or correct me if you think I'm wrong, I think it's a, a decent body to try to pursue that. Um, I just, I, I, I think there aren't any solutions that everyone is gonna like. I think it's not that we haven't been thinking about this. We really started thinking about this in September. I have looked at a and lot of And we've talked about it at this board two, yeah. three times already. This is the third or fourth, yeah. 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 I, I just don't know. It's not, if it was easy, we would have done it yeah. already. Yeah. It's hard. No, it's not easy. It's, it's really not easy. Hard. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm reticent okay. to kick the can down for uh, out another year. But <coughs> it has to be done correctly. And I, I don't want to throw something out there. <clears throat> that comes from this board that is going to alienate a very significant portion of the community that we have to think about. Um, One other thought I have is what I've worked on right now, we could limit that to R0 and R1 districts, which don't include two families. Mm -hmm. And then we can take a look at the R2 district, which includes one and two families, and possibly do a separate set of proposals right. for that. Yeah. One, one thing. We can talk about it later, but it may make sense to do separate proposals for those 
and that that's where we would be at the time as far as right. town meeting goes um how complete do we have to be by january 31st we don't we have don't to be complete we can put in a general um wording general warrant language so we won't meet again until after that's in yeah that's so scary, huh? uh, yeah my recommendation tonight is to put in a general warrant for all the things that we have intended to do and then we can always take it off the table after the fact mm -hmm. or it would force us potentially to make a final decision put something in front of town meeting that we think fits it fits best you know it, 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 we won't get to a point where everyone is is happy but that's kind of the basis of a compromise anyway so Right, so the real final decision point is March 7th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I mean, at first I thought you were saying it's not even ready to go on the warrant. No, no, no. If no, you no, want no. to put something general, we can do that, and that buys us a little bit more time. Yeah, I think that's, I, I think strategically that would be wise. I don't I think so too. No. And, and give a chance now to this process, maybe. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. getting into I think we're close. Yeah. I don't know that we'll get there by March 7th. I but think I we're think much we're close. closer on the single families. I think yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the two families, the duplexes, might seriously be worth considering as their own distinct mm -hmm. class, the R2s and R3s, and <coughs> really look at that. Yeah, I think it would, if you did what you suggested a minute ago, it gives you some time to think through those, yeah. those impacts more. And also, I mean, it'll only be a year, but potentially to sort of see and practice what actually occurs, mm -hmm. you know, if, that, if the R1 zero or one passes, you know, what is the impact? And, you know, there's more time to, to look at that and, and decide, okay, is this something How big is R3? Sorry? How big is R3? It's, in, it's very small. It's very, very small. Very few R3s. Yeah. So something that... R2. So it's we shouldn't let that wag the tail. Uh, no. no, but R2 is... But R2 big. is the big R2 is R2. R2. So that's yeah. something... We really just limit to R2. R2 is... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because all the two families in right. East Arlington, yeah, my right. neighborhood up here is R, has R2. R2. Yes. There's two families throughout Arlington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you help? Um, let's like really uh, map this out because we don't have a lot of weeks and we lost, we just lost a week. We thought we could meet on the 25th and now we cannot. So next week is a holiday. The 25th is special, special town party. meeting. Then we're talking about February 1st well, already for the next time we can meet. Unless we get off Monday. <coughs> There's a special town meeting that has to do with the school budget. Okay. So what about the implementation committee and the housing committee of the then we had, I can't remember, we had set another, or no, we sort we of punted on setting the next meeting because we weren't sure if we should meet before or after the, the but, but seven. But the, the subcommittee committee really went up. Could meet. Yeah. I mean, we've met, you know, first thing in the morning, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, you know, <coughs> so the meeting you, of that. You guys took a shot but, at it now based on this input? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I think we should, we can propose something to the, the master plan implementation committee, the, the housing subcommittee, and, uh, and, I yeah. Would it be worth inviting a representative of the citizens and a representative of the builders to that committee meeting? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I think initially it would be good. I think we should, uh, my suggestion would be to have a meeting of a group first. We okay. can talk through the, the feedback that was yeah. said right. here. We can talk through the sort of sense of the ARB in terms of how you, you think it makes sense to move forward because that's obviously really critical to what we recommend. And then I think from there, if it makes sense to do some out, further outreach to the Builder community to the the other group, whatever other people, mm -hmm. to, or to more realtors or what have you, because mm -hmm. um, I think that sort of try, figuring out a way to truth test the sort of statement that this will just <coughs> put the kibosh on everything, I think would would be useful. And it. that's a tough yeah. one because, like Bruce said, I think it's it's the test. A lot of it comes down to the tested product versus the untested product. So it's not that the untested product might not work, but you just don't know until mm -hmm. you. You try, but like I said earlier, I think they and usually get pretty creative. Sure with smaller margins, they're less, they're more risk averse to try something that's untested, mm -hmm. uncharted. To yeah, I mean, but on the flip side, you know, any zoning, you know, it's like we could be Houston, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you suggesting maybe shifting our meeting off of Monday to another date just to accommodate um, this thing here? That's a possibility, yeah. Um, so What's the process? You meet with the implementation committee? Yes. Then we meet again before? No, I think, well, we want to have the implementation committee and at least someone. I mean, here's right. the thing. If we, we don't, 
Um, we could do it if one, one of you wanted to meet with the implementation committee. Well, actually, you're on the I'm implementation on the committee. But, but if, we, if we wanted I'm more, then it becomes yeah. a public meeting. Good, because I couldn't. So, and then it probably should, needs to be in the evening, do you think? Uh, yeah. yeah. Joey. Um, I have some concern about, you know, this Winnell Evans group submitting their own warrant articles with or without the ARB submitting warrant articles on the same kind of material. Um, but if it doesn't, are you going to compromise? May maybe we should talk to the, the group she represents. Well, I think well that's, that's the idea. Thinking of doing. Yeah. yeah. I think the idea we're trying to get to something. We get, someone, we get her there. or yeah. someone from that group. So and then someone from the, the, the business, the building community and a realtor. At all at the same time? And you think that they could agree on something? Well, I think it's worth trying to attempt. I think it has I, to happen. I think yeah. it's important that Winnell's group in particular realizes um, it shouldn't look like the two are fighting. It shouldn't. Uh, that is to say, the ARB and her group even. And that's and, and that right. And, and, and that's it, and that's what we're discussing. And that's, <coughs> and it, it, as far as getting members of, of those distinct groups together with the Master Plan Implementation Committee to try to put something together that, right, so that the board feels workable. comfortable putting forth as a unified idea. I think they may still have some ideas that go further than some of the things that we're willing to to ask town meeting to do, but I think the <coughs> the bigger items that have been discussed, um, we're not very far off from where they are. I think there's some compromise to be made there, the, the good compromise um, that I think we both would be happy to put in front of town meeting and look like there's some, there's really been some discussion there and some, um, some back and forth. The, the difficulty is getting the business community um, in to make sure that they're comfortable with what's happening too. Um, and, and that's something that concerns me. So I, and if I'm alone on that, then, then let me know. But I, I think no. they need to, think you're no, right, what we heard tonight, I think step to is, is a meeting to coalesce right. what we heard tonight. Yeah. And that one should have with the master plan implementation and that neighbor and them, yeah, and the residents and no, right. for Wynell and that group, yes, yeah, yeah. Right. Then try to address the two family because we didn't really address it, right? Yeah. Talk about it in that, figure out a strategy, then yeah. test it with the, the builders. Well, maybe no? we should just remove the two family from but the discussion because that, that is a very tall order to come up that's with. That's the two entire R2 district, then. Yeah, that's right. So that's you're only right. operating on the R1 district. And R0. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Which isn't as big a concern well, because a, the labs are so big. Right. Well, I don't, I, if we're going to separate them, I don't know that we could do both okay. in the time frame. Yeah. Okay. But I think that I think that might work if we can if we can put forth <coughs> some other ideas to alleviate <coughs> the concerns that we're seeing with R2s. Um, Size is a major issue. Design is a major issue. We're, we're, no one is, is purporting to address the design issue at all. But if we can look at things like the driveways, that takes out the garage issue, which has been a huge problem for everyone in town. That, that can we get there? Should fix it. So can on the, on you can have two driveways by special permit now. What I heard John Carney say was that the ZBA doesn't like to grant that, mm -hmm. but they that is, is allowed with a special permit. So we don't really need to change the zoning to allow that. Maybe we can talk to the ZBA about we it. Should, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know how But you could change the zoning to, that, or the, the standards to allow for We two. could do it by right. Yeah. We yeah. could change it from special permit to by right. Well, we should look and see how many of those have been granted then. None. That's what um, we review all the ZBA cases. And we don't, we have not had many. Now maybe in discussions between the builder and the ZBA, they were discouraged. Mm. But I cannot say we've got many cases for a second driveway. Yeah, and, and what I heard in the side discussion that went on over here between 
John and, and Chris Klein, who's on the ZBA, is that in his time, in Christian Klein's time on the ZBA, he hasn't seen one at all. Mm-hmm. And what, what John Carney said was that he brought one up about eight years ago and was denied and hasn't tried since because of that. But it sounds like, uh, and again, it's, it's one person's testimony, but it sounds like giving that option, it's something that other towns do do and do allow, would take away a lot of the aesthetic problems that people have with some of these these two families and is it a good idea i mean you're going to get paired driveways Wait, on each lot right on two lots either side of the house yes, yeah. but yeah. Are, so how are you saying driveway for, driveway uh, house that's something that you're taking away parking right. on street parking <coughs> right. andy is that the same thing if you look at the street Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a row of these. You look at twenty foot one. driveways. So, yeah, so. that's right. So it'd be right. So it'd be ten, ten house, ten, ten house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's still the same. Which yeah, is what we really looked at. So really, what's worse? And it's in the eye of the beholder, but still, they both have substantial impacts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there, there's an argument you made from, on the transportation side that, like, even though the total length of curb cut is the same, mm-hmm. you wind up with these multiple more frequent opportunities right. to get back into. Yeah. Also, from a, I mean, this can be addressed with design standards. The, the Isn't it bigger bigger snow and ice, you wind up with like, if the driveways aren't designed properly, it's one yet yeah, another. It's two sets of ramps to navigate, which can be challenging for people, mm-hmm. you know, with mobility problems. Or like I said, if it's, if it's icy, just for anybody who's trying to walk down the street. Right. So, I, but again, I think that that issue can be addressed just yeah. with with design standards. I, I'd so. like to see these other how it works in these other communities, just to s- literally look at the model. Yeah. So uh, two for two families. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, I would say the fi- the fifteen percent slope on the driveway to me that's from a just from purely from a pedestrian safety perspective that's pretty important. So yeah. leaving aside the impact it has on yeah. you know the size of the house, I think right. that would be a good standard to have. Well, just in terms anyway. of efficient drainage and whatnot, because otherwise you know greater than twenty greater than fifteen percent slope, you have a lot of sheeting. You have there's other knock-on effects too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so right. people backing out of those, yeah. you know, up onto the sidewalk, and mm-hmm. they can't see anything. They can't see so. anything. Yeah. No, we, yeah. There are some Several very steep street. driveways that we've seen you know, that are just really go right that right down. And it's so, dangerous. So I realize it would have an impact, but I think there's people other reasons beyond this. Sir, do you have one more issue about uh, counting the parking as FAR for square footage, gross mm-hmm. square footage, uh, in the in the basement? Does it? How is the tax base done? Well, I believe the assessors, they look at livable area, and then there's a factor for mechanical space and whatnot. I don't know the exact vagaries of how they would calculate garage area included in gross floor area. I know they break out gross floor area and you know, liv- livable or finished area. I don't know if they would consider an attached basement garage as a finished or not uh, we'd have to talk to the assessors about that because that because that would be a major uh, bump just right across um, yeah. I don't know in, in, um, in the value you're saying that they, it would cause the values not, to well, go the up. value of the house is the value of the house I'm talking about what the, talent, the assessors value the assessors values for the taxes if they say that now now we're counting this as uh, livable space because that's what you're doing, right? Well, no, I, we're just counting it as gross floor area. There's gross floor area and then there's livable or finished, what they call finished square footage. Yes. So, so they're, they're, they're different. So is the taxes based off of? The, I believe the taxes are based on the amount of finished square footage. But again, we can talk to the Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really important point because I think where you're going is if that were to occur, that would affect everybody because right. the assessors can't say, oh, it's an you know, existing non-conforming use, they would just say, no, now this you, this counts differently for everybody. So mm-hmm. everybody's tax bill would go up mm-hmm. if they have a garage. So I think making sure that that's not going to be the unintended consequence right. like, is very important. Okay. So we'll leave it to staff to put together that. What do you want to say? Uh, working what, group what by time? when? Like when? Are you ch- do we want to try to do this in the next two weeks on the night other than Monday, or do you want to bump it off? Bump it off into February. Can we? Well, we can do it as a working group with with the residential working group of mm-hmm. the, the master plan implementation yeah, committee. We can. Um, one of us 
can attend or we can nominate Mike to attend. <laughs> Somebody uh, who was at this meeting needs to go to the yeah, meeting. Yeah, no, it should be. I want to be there if I can. Maybe okay. You or I or both of us. Both of us can. Yeah. So. You know what? Well, the only difference to us is that we have to advertise the meeting two days ahead. If more than one or two, if more than one of you goes, we have to advertise it, and that is not a, that's not a problem. We'll Unless do that. Short of been three foot six in that. Case. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will ask. We can, we'll seven. treat it as, <laughs> a, as an A or B meeting, and there's no reason why you can't have an A or B meeting at eight in the morning. You absolutely can, as long as you as long as you advertise. So if two of us come, it's got to be advertised. Yep. But that's, okay. but that's okay. We'd rather have the input yeah. and do that. But let's do that soon. I mean, let's so let's do that let's soon with an idea of actually to discussing it at the February I mean, we, 1st. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've just been scheduling meetings with like my doodle and trying to identify yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. All right. We'll do that. Do you like the 8 o'clock in the morning time? Is it, does that work for you? <laughs> no, I like that 6 o'clock. <coughs> 6 o'clock on Thursday? Yeah. I think just 6 p.m. You just go in, you get it, then you have your dinner after. It's to, I mean, it's, it, it limits it. I don't know. What do you think about that time? I mean, you were there. Six of one, half a dozen the other. Okay. Um, Thursdays are pretty good. Yeah, six on Thursdays is usually pretty good. All right. Six to seven. We will, um, we'll, we'll send out a poll. So two Andy's are going away, right? And that's yeah, going to be in the you next. You can come if you want. See what it's all about. You should. Yeah. You, you should, should come. You, yeah. We need the input now. This, this is not. Um, this is not direct. I, I went more. <laughs> <more last time. laughs> I'm glad I went. I got to see these diagrams, and they slowly. Okay. So I mean, it's the eleventh bell. I could try it for something this Thursday. That might be a little aggressive, but I. Uh, use it. We'll give that as an option for next. We'll give it as an option, but I think everybody would have to decide by tomorrow so that we could publish. Oh right, because we have to advert. We have to post. Otherwise, it. we'd have not to do. Not advertise this until we post it. So. Maybe I'll we're talking as more likely. That yeah. first. And if, as if honestly, 21st. if that comes down to it, Andy and I can hash it out between ourselves who right. gets to yes. stay home. Right, or can. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, Maybe. if that's the option, then just one gets go. But if it's, if it's advertised, I'll come. Okay. Okay. I'm I not see gonna, Yeah. Right. yeah. But would it be the whole implementation committee or just the housing? So I think just, just the, for the for residential, residential working okay. group. Okay, so how many, yes. how many of those? Are you uh, in that? Yeah, it's three it's or four. four? It's okay. Wendy, yourself, Mike, Mike, Perfect. right, What's and then said? Laura, myself, and David. Yeah. Yeah. David okay. will be here in that room, but okay. And should do we be doing some? I, I, I just honestly, I am not sure <coughs> what else we can do to tweak this. It's almost like we have to do something completely different. I, do you agree with me? For I, what? To, to tweak what we're proposing, I just don't know what else we can really do unless we just take a totally different approach. I think that. Which is, would be FAR, probably, right? Uh, we've looked at FAR, and the building commissioner, uh, the, the building inspector, commercial <coughs> services department is very, they're not on board with that, with the FAR, the concept of instituting an FAR cap. Um, but they'll be there, and we can develop. discuss that. With well, Mike, Mike will be there. Yeah, I, okay. I, yeah we'll try to get. Yeah, that. I think. It would, I, I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily think that in the interim that the staff need to do anything. It would be helpful okay. if you could send around if you have it the proposal from. One eleven. One eleven. Yes. Yeah. As well as I don't know. If, did we get the? If we can get the latest drawings. Yep. And yep. anything else send from the staff proposal electronically, that would be great. Both no, originally we did look at an that. FAR concept, and then after the talking to the building inspector, they okay. really did not feel comfortable with that. So we we downshifted to mm -hmm. what we have now. And I think the easiest way to make a meaningful tweak is to keep what we currently have for single-family homes, and then really look at the two-family homes in greater detail. Yeah, I guess yeah. the one thing would is it. Do you think it's feasible to have? We talked about update doing drawings that are like these, but for the two families, is that something that? Uh, yeah, well, I'll have, we'll have to talk here. with um, with uh, David and we will start him before he leaves. Okay. He's leaving on Friday. <laughs> so you yeah. can start leaving? working Lexington. Yes. Oh. And nobody else can take over. Um, well, I, I can do a, a little bit, but not. I don't have the same degree of skill that he does. But we can work. So we'll yeah. to, we'll work something. Out. We'll come him hourly. <laughs> Hire Ms. Bell. So we're mostly we're mostly talking about the twenty first, Thursday the twenty first at six o'clock.
put that in your tentatively. And then for the mixed use, this one will be February 1st. Is that good for people? That's the yeah. regular Monday. That's, Monday. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. next Monday That's the that next we Monday meet. meeting. And, and I, I want to start vetting the mixed use ideas in the same way. I want to contact um, the Bob Bowes helped us get some um, builders here. I would like to get that kind of um, response to the mixed use as well. I can reach out to him tomorrow just to um, to yeah. help develop that and start getting that work out. Right. And we're going to work with the group first works. Yeah. Okay. I assume it'll work with Michael, hopefully. And the other thing, just to confirm, that staff is going to submit a, a loosely worded, non specific zoning um, warrant article for both mixed use and residential. Yeah, I think we did. And the parking, right? The parking goes with the mixed use, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, we combine that. Yeah, yeah we're just calling it mixed use, right? Right. Oh, that makes sense. Very first to me. That was a good thing today. That yeah, was oh, hard but you. good. Um, yeah. no, do mean, we have anything else? Do we have anything big coming up in the next few weeks? We don't have any permits. No permits. Up. Nothing. I have never heard no rumblings. So this is fine if we. This is important. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Motion. Well, I move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you.